Hello? You need to come here, Marina. I found the guy. What guy? What do you mean, Alexei? Pavel? Where um, is he? Where are you no, now? No, 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 Marina. Um, hold on. Listen, I didn't mean Pavel, okay? Uh, I mean the other guy you're looking for. The one with the scar. I found bones. <sighs> Come on, Alexei. That was vague of me, I'm sorry. Okay? I'll get straight to the point next time, I promise. Here's the address, mm-hmm. The cause of death would be the gunshot wounds. He died almost immediately. The bullet wound looks like they were shot from close range. What did forensics say? Not much. They think a professional did it. Um, can you tell me about the scar on his head? Well, this one's interesting. At first glance, you'd think it's your typical superficial wound. But if you look closely, he has a plate on his skull made of titanium. The wound is located here, on the right frontal lobe. A serious wound, I would say. Small in diameter, but really deep. From a nail, right? It's possible. It affected the brain tissue, and the neurosurgeon worked hard to save his life. Hold on, so... Can a regular doctor perform this type of risky operation? On the spot, nonetheless? Miss, did you not just hear what I said? The one who did it was a neurosurgeon, and not in a garage, nor some forest, but in a sterile operating room. And you're right, it is a complex operation. You would need some anesthesia, surgery, cam, CT scans. Let's hurry up, Marina. I'll be late for work. What will you do from here? Is this a report? Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to visit all the neurosurgery departments in the city. I believe if Bones really did have a serious operation, there must be records of it. Are you kidding, Marina? Hmm? This cannot be just a coincidence. Pavela's a neurosurgeon. First he disappears, then we find the body of this... Bones. There must be some kind of connection here, some operation report, and if it matches the findings from the coroner, then it really must be Pavel. I'm taking that. What now? I'm sure it was illegal, okay? But that's not what the coroner told us earlier. He said... Marina, what he said was, a neurosurgeon did it in a hospital, that's all. What if there were witnesses? Like other doctors, for example. Don't be naive, Marina. They won't just tell you about it. I'm already late for work. Let's just talk about it some other time. Hold on. Do you think I should talk to Baturin? He might have some information about this. That's a good idea. I'll talk to him for you. Alexei, someone called you earlier. Tatiana? It's Chomka, Valera's son. He mentioned something about fishing. Seems you've made a friend, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's a nice kid. Just like his father. Is that so? You know you shouldn't judge by just appearances. That man struggled a lot. Just take Chomka, for example. Valera blames himself for what happened to his son. And what exactly happened? Nobody knows. Valera and his friends went to the forest and took Chomka with them. The men had few drinks, of course, as usual, and there were loggers there, cutting down huge trees. A tree fell towards Chomka, and his legs got crushed from it. It was too late when Valera noticed. When did it happen? Two years ago. Take this. You should bring it home for the kids. Thank you. What? Maybe. You'd want to talk to me. About Alexei visiting you. It's not me he's visiting. With Chomka, they've become friends. And he's only done so twice. I like what you think. Nothing gets past you, huh? That man. It's going to ruin your life again. Mother, 
He brought the money back, okay? How responsible of him. Will you listen to me for once? Do not get into this mess again. Mother. Watch your tone, mother. I was there, okay? I was at your bedside after you tried to take your own life. My heart sinks every time I think about it. Are you always going to guilt me about this? <laughs> I'm not trying to make you feel bad here. I'm just reminding you what kind of man Alexei is. But Mother knows nothing, right? We should get some snacks too. I'd love some fries or something roasted. And you know better that's until you need some things repaired on that little greenhouse of yours. Madam, we'd like some case of beer. I hope that's enough for us. Can you tell us how much? Look, I'm just going to say this. You already have a family. And I think it would be in your best interest to keep it from falling out. My family's fine, Mother. I didn't say it's not. But people might spread rumors. You know what? Never mind. And soon enough, they'll find out whatever Saint Alexei might be hiding once they start the investigation. Mother, what investigation? Well, from the town. Dima and I filed a report to the town administration. Are you serious? What? If Alexei is not a bad person, then there's nothing to worry about. My goodness, Mother, you're unbelievable. Hey, 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 calm down, Nastya. Okay, hey. here you go. Nastya, take the pies with you. How All dare right, you thanks. walk out on me? You're like your father. On, Just leave go. Alexei alone, Mother, okay. please. All right. I'm Look, I'm doing this for you, Nastya. Okay? Please understand. What I understand is that you're bothering a man trying to be decent. You will thank me later on. Let's head back. Coming through! Whoa, there, kid! Check it out! Someone got a sweet ride. <laughs> I'm not giving you a ride, though. It looks really cool. My father just bought it yesterday, with the money that he got back. It's got a battery that can last up to 30 kilometers. Oh, that's By awesome. By the way, I read stuff about memories. Did you know that our brain can store terabytes of data? That's actually correct. I also read that everything we learn stays in our brain forever. And when we need to remember it, neurons can make a pathway to that information. Those are called neural connections. Uh-huh, but the path should be correct for it to work. And there are factors that could block those paths. Like that path, see? Yeah. If we turn right and try to go that way, it would be impossible to go to our fishing spot. Sure, but how would I be able to find the path to my memories? Don't worry. I'm sure you will. We'll find a way. I'm looking into it. Do you think your amnesia could be a dissociative one? It could be. In dissociative amnesia, people forget personal memories. But they may keep their professional and life skills. Have you remembered stuff from your personal life? Almost nothing. How unlucky of us. I can't walk and you've lost your memory. <laughs> How unlucky indeed. Where are we going to fish? I'll join you tonight. It's not there. Hmm? The file you're looking for is right here on the top shelf, see? Oh. Shernikov Tionka. Thank you. No problem. What are you reading? Oh, it's that boy, Artyom's uh, old file. Yeah, I just wanted to check. Why? Did the city doctor screw up? He was taken straight to the city hospital when he got hurt. They might have missed something there. No, sir. Tiomka's doing fine. But it would have really helped if he had gotten a surgery back then. His spinal roots were affected. I really wish I was there to help out. But I was out of town then. Anyway, get back to work. Clean the windows, sterilize the wards. Uh -huh. I'll check in in a couple of hours. Hi, Alexei. Uh, Tatiana, wait. I would like to apologize for yesterday. You cannot just do that and then run away. I understand. Will you tell me what happened? 
Of course I will. Once I figure it out. I promise. I hope you'll figure it out soon. Come on, Anna. If you won't tell me what's going on at all, then I won't talk to you. Anna, please. All right. First, you gotta stop telling lies because I'm so fed up with it. I called the hospital. And then? Remember? He told me that Kazachenko asked you to stay behind. Turns out he left way before we did. Surprise? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I'm glad you came. Yes, I have my stuff with That's me. That's great. Does it hurt? Uh, a How little painful? bit. I cannot train right now, and I limp a bit. That's the case with hernias. But the operation is simple. Recovery will take several weeks, but then you'd be able to run marathons again. What about playing violin? I think you can play a violin, even with a hernia. All right, then, uh, go get registered. And after Thank that, you. come to my office. Hmm? Sure. Hey, by the way, who did the rounds last night? I need to talk to them about changing the dose for one of my patients. Yeah. May I start? Yes. Good day to you. Oh, Dr. Semyonov, good day. Glad to have you in this session. Will you be all right, sir? Don't worry, doctor. I appreciate your concern, but we have some work to do right now. You may oh. start your session. Yes. The patient is male, 25-year-old athlete, a marathon runner. Due to osteochondrosis, uh, he can't compete right now. He's suffering from a hernia which compresses part of his spinal root. You know, the patient was hesitant about the procedure at first. Did you persuade him, perhaps? Well, in a way, I might have. I just told him if I was in his position, I wouldn't worry at all. The risk of complication is quite low. And did you tell him about those complications? Hmm, of course I did. All right, then. Markov will be assisting. Lita, how's our athlete doing? We're done with preparations. He'll be on the table in five minutes. Uh -huh. Perfect, just as scheduled. Please sign here. Yes, that should be covered mm -hmm. by your insurance. What about Anna? What's she asked for a replacement. Mm -hmm. Where is she? Let me check if that day. In the cafe, I think. Do you need my signature as well? Yes. Like we do. We have a I do. At PM. Yes, of right here. We will do all mm -hmm. the All right, we'll see you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you coming, doctor? Wait, Dr. Markov. Have you done this procedure before? I have. Could you start it without me then? I just need five minutes. No problem. Thank you. I won't lie to you anymore. I'll tell you the truth just like you wanted. Okay. I appreciate it, Sergey. All right. What I said earlier was true. I can't tell you where I went that night. Wait, hold on. Please let me explain first. Listen to me. The reason why I can't tell you is because it's somebody else's secret and it's not my place to tell anyone. And I don't want to lie to you. I really don't, but I can't tell you where I was. And I want to say that it's up to you to either believe and trust me on this or to leave and end things between us. Tell me, do you really love me? We're in public, Sergei. I don't care. And you're not having an affair? No! <laughs> no, I promise I'm not cheating on you. There aren't any third parties involved in this. Believe me.
No. Oh, where's Dr. Strelnikov? It's really difficult to do this operation alone. Thank you. Look, you can keep your secrets. I mean, I still want to know them, but I don't want to torment you with it. What's important is that you don't betray me. I won't. You're too dear to me. And you to me. We're in public, Anna. I know, I don't care. So... Is everything okay? Finally, I thought I'd finish without you. I'm sorry about that. Why is this cut so long? Oh, I had to. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> Let's pause and check his reflexes. That looks good, what about the other? There's no response. Try again. Make it stronger. Nope. Still no response. Why is that? Let me see. Oh no. What? What happened? You can't be serious. What is it? No, Marco. What have you done? What? You just cut his nerve. Oh. Are you blind or what? How come you didn't see the nerve root? I don't understand. I don't know. How come you don't know? Are you out of your mind? But I really don't. Just shut up! And you stop doing that! I can't believe this. Let's continue removing the disc. Stop standing around, Markov. Can you explain to us, Dr. Markov, how did you happen to miss uh, a simple operation that you performed so many times, leaving your patient unable to use his right leg? I, uh... I really don't know how it happened. I'm sorry, I don't have an explanation. I see. Well, I think you should start writing up your resignation, Dr. Markov. Hold on. That's a pretty harsh decision. I don't think there's a better alternative here, Doctor. The patient came to us to fix his hernia, so he can run marathons again, but now he can't even walk. This is grave clinical negligence. You may face charges for this. I think... It's human factor. I was wondering when you'd speak up. Thank you. Dr. Stronikov, wasn't it your operation? Didn't you see what happened? Well, I... I also don't know how the incident happened, sir. Well, obviously. You may go, Dr. Stralnikov. And I'll be waiting for your notice. No. What do you mean, no? If I didn't personally know, Dr. Markov here, I'd probably agree with your decision. During my career, I've seen numerous medical errors, both mine and other doctors. It is human factor. Sure, humans make mistakes. But through those mistakes, humans can learn. And significant mistakes like what happened today can mold an ordinary doctor into a great one. What it truly understands the cause of destructions, the impact of a bad mood, or even the slightest lapse of concentration. Here's my decision. 
Due to your mistake, Dr. Markov, a young man is left disabled for the rest of his life. You will be banned from doing operations on your own for the next six months. You are only allowed to assist. Well, uh, isn't it? My decision's too... final. Here we go now, doctors. We'll take care of him. The pupils dilated on the side where he has wounds. No reaction. Check his blood pressure. Looks like he's suffering from brain hemorrhage, but no signs of fracture. It sounds serious. We may not be able to help him. May I examine him? We can't save him here. I'll call the city hospital. They have the proper tools there. Can you tell me what happened? Please calm down, breathe deeply, then exhale. Now tell me what happened. He fell from the car to the asphalt. He's been out since then? Yes. How much did he drink? What? Alcohol could make the bleeding worse. How much did he drink? I don't know. I think about the three models. Does he have any drug allergy? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I see. Well, why the delay? What happened? Pressure's 180 over Are 90. You sure? Decrease his blood pressure. We're operating. What? Well, what do you mean operating? I've, oh, I've already called. The, the ambulance is coming. When will they arrive? About 90 minutes. With his situation, he won't even survive for an hour, unless we drain the blood to decompress his brain. Drain the blood? Who's going to do it then? We don't even have tools for it. Just look at him. He'll die. He's still alive, but he will die if you don't make the decision. Intracranial hemorrhage is an urgent matter. The blood is compressing his brain. We need to drain it, otherwise he won't make it to the surgery. He's having seizures. Get the anticonvulsants. But they're on their way now. That's great. But as you see, the patient's getting worse. He needs the drainage. I can't let you do this. It's too risky. I just want to stay out of trouble. What I don't want is to get fired from our practice. Listen, Yvonne. My decision's final. Don't touch him until the ambulance comes. We don't have anything here. No expertise, no tools to help him, so... Do me a favor and clean him up. Do some blood tests. That's it. I'll be in my office. Wait here. Do you think we happen to have an electric drill okay. and drill bits? Yes, we do have them. I'll bring it. I'll be right back. Mm hmm. Are you sure? We can't just sit and wait. We're going to drill the skull and drain the blood. Even without Ivana.
With an ordinary drill? But how? With no MRI, it's impossible. His right pupil reacts to light, but not the left one. That's where the hematoma is. He's getting worse. If we do nothing, he'll die in 20 minutes. What? What do you mean? Miss, Can you please, help my boyfriend? You can't be Why? here. Please What's hide happening? in the corridor. Tatiana, hold on. What's your name? Lyra. Listen, Lara. I'll be honest with you. Your boyfriend needs an operation, but we don't have the necessary tools for it here. But surely there's something you can do. <laughs> Tell her, Tatiana. Is that the only option? There's no other way? There is no other way. So we need you to decide right now. And are you sure he can do it? Yes. If there's one man here who can save your boyfriend, it would be him, believe me. Then I consent. Let's do the procedure. Let's get started. Please wait outside. Do you know when the ambulance will arrive? You see, uh, we have a patient here needing immediate help. I understand. Well, uh, just a moment. Alexei! Alexei, what are you doing? Thank you very much. Open the door now! Don't let anyone in. <sighs> that idiot. Yes. Let's get started. <laughs> well, what are you doing? It's too late to ask us to stop, but you can help us. All right. Bring the catheter here, please. <sighs> Secure the tube. What now? Yes. We did it. Let's see. That's for locking me out. Here's your thyme and marjoram, and your favorite Caucasus herbs. Thank you so much for this, Marina. You do really know what I like in my tea. Here, let me make you a cup. I'd love that, sir, but I'm in a hurry. Could you tell me who's close friends with Bones, nine or ten years ago? Around the time when he got badly wounded. I don't know why you're asking me this. You found Bones already, right? Yes, we have. We even saw the plate in his head. So it's over for him now, huh? Such a pity indeed. I'm looking for the surgeon who performed the operation on him. Apparently a good neurosurgeon did it. But the thing is, I don't have his name. Do you have tips on where I could find him? Well, I've heard some rumors. However, nobody knows for sure. I'm sorry I can't help. It's all right. Thank you. Hold on. Anton. That's right. I didn't remember his name at first because he retired a long time ago. And do you know where I could find him? Anton Kavashenko, his nickname. Uh, I, th I think it's Kavash. He and Bones used to be as close as brothers. So I'm definitely sure he knew everything about Bones that time. I told you. 
Kent. I know I made a promise before the surgery. But things didn't go exactly as we planned during the operation, so one of the nerves leading to your right ankle was damaged. Is it serious? Mm, yes. This is why you can't lift your right foot right now. I see. Well, it'll heal, right? In general, you may eventually restore function on your foot, but... I can't make any guarantees. Dr. Strelnikov, I've injured my hand, broke my collarbone twice, and now my foot isn't working. But I will recover, just like my past injuries. Even if it does, it'll take several months. Or maybe even years for you to recover. I'm sorry. I'll work hard to heal sooner then. I have an upcoming marathon this May. Good day. I'd like to talk to Mr. Anton Kavasenko. Thank you. Good afternoon. Can I speak with Mr. Anton Kavasenko? No. But... Thank you. Hello, may I speak with Anton Kavasenko? Hello, is Anton Kavasenko there by chance? Good afternoon, I'd like to speak with Anton Kavasenko, please. Hello, sir. Hello there, miss. How can I help you? You need your car repaired? Actually, I'm looking for Mr. Anton Kavasenko. Is he around? Why do you ask that? It's a personal matter. Well, in that case, then, I am Anton Kovacenko. Nice to meet you. I'm Marina Semyonov, and I'm an investigator. I heard that you know someone named Malutin, also known as Bones? Bones? Nah, I never heard of him, don't know him. Are you sure? Yeah. That's weird. I was told that you two are like brothers. <laughs> well, they lied to you. Don't believe them. I see. Well, the thing is, Bones was killed a couple of days ago. The funeral is today. Well, now. You knew the man after all. Yeah, sure, I didn't know Bones. But does it matter now? I just have a few questions. Um, uh, by any chance, do you know how and when Bones got the titanium plate on his head? <sighs> you know, Miss, whatever your name is, I quit that life. I left long ago and for good. And I don't want to get involved in their lives whatsoever, all right? I'm trying to start a new life, and I don't care about this stupid case of yours! <laughs> Alexei, I need to know all about this Anton Kavasenko. See if we can find leverage on him. Well then, you're in luck. His son has been arrested for selling drugs. Go use that on him. Dr. Semyonov, do you have a minute? Yes. What's the matter? I'm worried about you. Oh. Why? How are you feeling lately? <laughs> are you really going to worry about my health every single time you can? I'm just concerned. You just went through a serious operation and here you are working. Mm-hmm. Is that why you're always asking everyone about me? Like Barlamova or Bordarenko? Barlamova, please go to operating room 3. 
I know what your intentions are. You want to have my position. <laughs> well, then I guess you'd have to wait a little longer. You've been breaking a few rules lately, Doctor. First, you discharged yourself. Then there's... Dr. Markov. Mr. Svetov called recently. He was asking whether you've fully recovered or not. Does he know about the situation regarding Dr. Markov? You were supposed to fire him. Instead, you gave him a chance. Are you threatening me, Doctor? I'm just saying there are rules. Listen here. Dr. Kasachenko. If the Minister ever knows about Markov's issue, at least, I'll be able to explain my decision. Beating around the bush isn't my thing, after all. Excuse me, I have some work to do. I'm just worried about your health, Doctor. Tying a hook to the fishing line is actually hard. I wonder if I ever went fishing. Everybody has. I wouldn't be so sure. Can I see it? Oh, a square knot. I bet you spent a lot of time fishing with your father. Maybe. There you go. Let's stay quiet, or we'll scare away the fish. Okay. Did you know, Alexander the Great remembered all his soldiers' names? 30,000 of them. Isn't that cool? Uh -huh. Have you seen the film Memento? I watched it. The main character is your exact opposite. How so? You can't remember things. Well, he always forgets. He relies on photos to remember things. There were also times when fake memories replaced real ones in his mind. It was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> was it real or was it fake? It messed his mind. What a nightmare, right? You're right, it Quiet. is. I got one. Oh, oh nice. <sighs> oh, it's stuck. Don't pull too hard, your line might snap. There are many snags here. My dad lost a spinner in the water last year, but he found it. <laughs> Good for him, then. Guess I'll dive in. Can't do it. Alexei, what happened? Are you okay? I think I'm afraid of water. Really? But you saved the girl last time. I did, but. The water isn't as deep as here. Hey, it's all right, Alexei. I won't tell anyone. Yes? Good day, sir. Are you here for Kavasenko's case? I'm attorney Marina Semyonov. 
Here is the application for the release of Mr. Kavasenko. In my opinion, the detention was done outside the provisions of the law. On top of that, my client seemed to have been searched with no attesting witnesses, which was yet another violation. That's why the case should be considered invalid. That's not enough. Is that the case? All right then. My client's immediate family were not informed about his detention, which is also considered a violation. You have to inform the family 12 hours after arrest. Unless such a measure is needed for the investigation. But it wasn't needed, was it? So what? You're just wasting your time complaining here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy. You should release Kavasenko. I understand. You're just doing your job. Just as we do ours here, in the police force. We send criminals straight to prison, and you people release them. No. We lawyers protect those who haven't been found guilty, just like my client. I think you just can't admit you've made a mistake. Really? You know that I'm right. Otherwise, you'd bring in arguments against the violations I said, which you're not doing. You haven't even read the application I gave you because you know that what's in it are enough information to prove I'm right. You say the police bring criminals to jail. I say my client isn't one. Impressive attorney. I have never seen a lawyer as good as you. Then it's about time we finally meet. Pleased to meet you, officer. Look, they found drugs on the kid. Yes, he said it's for personal use, but it's still drugs. My hands are tied here. I understand. Um, to be honest with you, I am trying to help the kid so I can strike a deal with his father. His father has information that may help me find my missing friend, and I want to use this as leverage to get him to cooperate. Can you help me? Maybe you just forgot how to swim. No, Tiongka, I really don't think that's the case here. I actually forgot my phobia. But wait, then that means... Careful. Your fear doesn't depend on your memory. You may be right. Let me help you. I said let me... No! Hey, hey, are you hurt? I'm okay, don't worry. Let me help you. Don't help me. But... Please don't help me. I said don't. Tiomka. I have to do it myself. Are you sure? They aren't home yet. <laughs> Come on, you spent hours fishing too. This one's different. Just calm down. I was the only person he would usually go fishing with and no one else. Not even his friends. What? I don't get it. It's our bonding time, father and son, okay? Come on, Valera, stop overthinking about this, all right? How couldn't I? Chomka, what happened? Are you hurt? It's nothing, don't worry. Are you all right? Did he fall? Let's clean you up. Just when we're about to get along. What happened to my son? Well, as you can see, he fell. Don't take me for an idiot. If you can't keep an eye on my son, do not approach him. Dad! Get inside! Are we clear? Jomka. Hey, are you alright? Wait, son. Thank you. I never thought you'd really be able to release him. Well, I did my part of the deal, so now you do yours, all right? Yeah. Good. Tell me everything you know about Bones. Like the time when he got that injury on his head. Uh, about ten years ago, in September. Are you sure? <laughs> I am sure. I was there when it happened. Oh. What exactly happened? Well, 
We were hanging out one night. A member of another gang came up to us. He was holding a nail gun, and, and he just shot a nail right up Bone's head. It was this long of a nail, about four inches. It's crazy. And that's how he got the plate on his head. Where did he get it? In Hospital 4. There was this uh, doctor who would sometimes help our guys. And he was good. His name? His name? I don't know. That was the only time I saw the doctor. Also, the procedure was kind of done illegally. All right. Do you remember what he looks like then? Like the color of his hair or the color of his eyes? Look, Maybe some distinctive features? I'm sorry, I really can't remember. It was dark when uh, we brought our friend to him. What I can tell you is the man was young. I was surprised at the time. They said he was uh, some student or An whatever. intern? An intern. Yeah, that's right, intern. That's it. Okay, an intern from Hospital 4. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Thank you for cooperating. <laughs> it's just a one-time deal, all right? You, you help me and I help you. That's it, are we clear? Yes, one-time deal, as promised. Thank you. Go to sleep now. It's already late. I will after this. Go to bed, Alexei. Why are you even awake at this hour? Is there something wrong, huh? <clears throat> Did I know how to swim when I was little? Did you? <laughs> you swam better than all of your friends. I didn't have to teach you. You just jump into the water and swam. <laughs> Come on, Alexei. Go sleep now, all right? All right. Good afternoon. Office hours are over. We're closed. Come back tomorrow. I'm not here for an appointment. I would just like to ask a few questions. How may I help you then? I'm a lawyer working on a case, and I would need a list of doctors who worked here ten years ago. I'm sorry, but I cannot give you that. Why is that? It's because an official request must be sent to us beforehand. You should know that, miss. Maybe we could somehow... Have a good day. Mm. I see. To be honest with you, ma'am, actually... Did I not make myself clear? I lied to you. I'm not a lawyer. And I'm not investigating a case. It's just, I'm... I'm looking for a man. He... left me after I told him I was pregnant. What a jerk. Yes. I was told he was staying at a friend's house. He was an intern in this hospital ten years ago. I really want him to take responsibility for his child, and if you could help me find him, I would be forever you grateful to you. You should have told me sooner. You didn't have to lie about some case. Well, I... Well, what is his name? This guy, I mean. That's the thing. I don't know. The only thing I know is that he used to work here. Well, don't worry. We'll find him in no time. Just wait here. Yes, thank you for your help. These men, how dare they do such a thing? All right. Here, year 2007. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Is he... in there? I hope so. I know these two. Pavel Andreev and Sergei Strelnikov.
Yes? Tatiana, are you busy right now? Um, see, uh, I was just wondering if he'll be forced to meet up with me tonight. Well, um, I already had some plans tonight, so no. Oh, okay then. Thank you. And never mind. Bye. Hold on, wait, I have an idea. Maybe we could meet tomorrow? Okay, tomorrow then. Uh-huh, bye. <laughs> You're not cold? No. Even if I were, it's not like I'd tell you. Just like when we were kids. You'd never admit it because your mom might take you home. <laughs> That's right. So you remember? No, it's more like a feeling. Sometimes I find myself wondering what's running through here. Honestly, just medicine. <laughs> so why do you come back after your studies? Most would rather stay in the city. <laughs> Not sure. I don't like the city. It's too noisy. You see, my parents, they've been married for 40 years. <laughs> of course they'd fight. Sometimes they'd shout. <laughs> Sometimes I'd get involved. But in the end, they'd make up and go somewhere. Boating, admiring the sunset. <laughs> Sounds nice. That's what you want? I think it is. Everything here is easier than in the city. Who is who? What I should expect? sorry about what happened with Valera. I heard you two fell out. He did have a point. They had an argument with Chomka. Valera doesn't speak about it, but I know that he's suffering. They finally started spending some time together. Chomka finally got out of his shell. The situation was 
improving for them until you came. So what? Tell me, what are you up to? Sailcloth, fishing, you even came to see this match. Now, Xiao, listen. Tiomka's a brilliant boy. He's inquisitive and kind. Why can't we be friends? You had your chance to be your father five years ago, and you let it pass. Okay, okay. That's it. All right, we did it. I'm sorry. That's it. You guys are tied. I've been trying to get closer with him. Not just another Auntie Nastya. The boy's attached to you. What'll happen next? Look. What will happen next? To your precious boy when you grow tired of playing as a doctor. How do you think he will survive? What makes you think I'm playing? Because I've seen this before. Who is he for you? Just an experiment? Another puzzle for you to solve? Two to one! That was great! He isn't any of that. <laughs> he is a human being. Okay, bye! Bye! He's my son. I'm begging you. Just leave him alone. See you soon. Well played. Chomka, you're all sweaty. Slip it up, please. No, I'm all right. Chomka, listen to me. Aunt Nastya. You already know that your arms and back will hurt if you don't. No, I won't. Do you want to cry? I'm not crying. Chomka. What are you saying? Chomka. Why are you here anyway? You're not my mom. All you do is fuss around and whine. I knew I should have just stayed at home. Tiomka, come here. That wasn't right. She takes care of you. She loves you. It's itching? Come on. Do you even have to ask? You're aware that Chomka couldn't feel his legs, right? I think Chomka should be examined once again. You think? Find another lab rat for your experiments. We're leaving now. Honey, listen to me. No, I don't think we have anything to discuss anymore. Let's go home. Why is that? Did you forget about your condition yesterday? Well, that was yesterday. Now I don't have any problems. But didn't you hear what the doctor said? We'll immediately start the treatment. I'm not dying, understood? What makes you say that? It's a tumor. Come on. Doctor Natural Law, please proceed to the staff room. Listen. Do you know what I think? We've waited for this baby for too long. I will see it through. Understood? It's unthinkable. Pregnancy is a miracle. A lot of diseases disappear during pregnancy, I'm sure about that. Trust me, my dear. He lives inside me, I feel it. He's pushing me. Here, feel it. Don't be afraid, darling. Come. You know what? It's really not that bad. Honey! Honey! Somebody! Help my wife! Call a doctor! Get a doctor! Okay! Easy, easy! Easy, 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 easy. The patient's a 40-year-old woman with stage 4 glioblastoma on the left side. She's inoperable and admitted with tony convulsion. So we should conduct a radiotherapy. Or chemical. The problem is that the patient's also pregnant. 18 weeks in. It'll be her firstborn. She and her husband have been planning it for years. So she refused the therapy? Have you explained to the patient and to her family members the consequence of her decision? Yes, but the patient's obstinate. Her husband said he'd try to persuade her. She's willing to die for the sake of her baby. That stupid woman, she should have an abortion. Even obstetricians have a regulation to prioritize the mother before the baby. Yes, but they don't have maternal instinct. 
Neither do we, so we must insist on not turning her into a living incubator. We shouldn't decide in her place. So you're saying that we should let the patient die? If that's her decision, I think we shouldn't act against the patient's will. I mean, we can wait for the baby to develop its lungs and have the patient go to labor. No, even if that works, I mean, theoretically, if she goes to labor only 28 weeks, the baby will die from convulsions. Maybe I can convince her. I'll speak with a patient. It's better than just arguing. There's this case in San Diego. A woman gave birth to twins while her brain has been dead for four months. She was left on a ventilator. Four months on a ventilator? Who's going to cover for it? Let's not think about money now, shall we? Fact is, that is San Diego. Doctors couldn't save both the mother and her child, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. What about calisotomy? Should we try that? It's very... controversial. Yeah, you're right. It is. So it seems that attacks would then be our problem. Convulsions would be preventing oxygen from entering the body. Anti-seizures won't help. If we do a calisotomy, we'll solve the issue. And the baby will develop. Yes. We can buy her some time. Yes. Probably. Probably not. Abortion is still the best course of action. The patient is given a firm refusal. You won't make her change her mind. Where did you even get that idea, Maxim? Dr. Varlamov, I was fiddling with a brain model. It occurred to me that epileptics, too, get convulsions, which are cured via callosotomy. Yes. The brain is divided, and then the convulsions stop. All our problems are coming from convulsions. Yes, except our patient isn't an epileptic. You're trying to use the treatment for one disease to treat another. Yes, yeah, she's not epileptic. But this is the only option to save the baby. Forgive me, Sir Semyonov, but as the attending doctor of the patient in question, I must save her life and not the baby. That's exactly my point, and Maxim's suggestion might just let us save two people. Our chances are abysmal, but it's there. No, I don't agree with you. Please consider my opinion. Well, Maxim, would you do the surgery? Yeah. Before talking with the patient, go fetch Irina. She'll help you with the persuasion. Understood. So, have you heard about Maxim's idea? Hello there, Igor. He's about to conduct a calisotomy to a pregnant patient with an inoperable tumor. Well, I don't mind, of course. Dr. Semenov agreed to experiment on dying patients. Ah, the one suffering from convulsions? The patient who's pregnant? Can I have this Is coffee? Is there a chance to save her? Well, that's a hard task. She'd have to start taking chemical therapy pronto because she doesn't have much time on her hands. And I would do everything to persuade her to have an abortion. But if Maxime already suggested a solution... Well, of course, Lida, our most handsome Dr. Bondarenko knows all the solutions. All right. Later, then. It's predictable. Later, then. How are if you, If you're man? here, too. If you're going to persuade me to have an abortion, don't waste your time. Don't worry. We have an idea on how to tackle this. At least this one doesn't need an abortion. That's new. As you may know, our brains consist of two hemispheres. These two are interconnected. Whenever someone is having tonic convulsions, one of these hemispheres will send what we call electrical impulses to the other one, using the nerve tract that's called the corpus callosum. We'll stop the convulsions by severing that nerve. This method is originally for patients with epilepsy to stop their convulsions. So you're going to cut my brain like an apple? No, we're only going to cut the nerve tract. Will the tumor disappear along with the convulsions, Listen doctor? To me. The tumor will not disappear. There's no magic pill for an immediate recovery. Also, you refuse the radiotherapy, thus limiting our actions. You do understand that. 
Convulsions affect both you and your baby. Through calisotomy, we can at least give you a chance to give birth to your baby. And what about me, Doctor? What will happen to me? Uh, if this nerve tract is severed... Your brain hemispheres will be divided. See, the left hemisphere is more rational and dominant. The right one deals with creativity and intuition. It's possible that one side of the body will work slower when compared to the other one. Or maybe you just won't be able to draw with your right hand. So are you saying that I'd still be capable of walking, speaking, and giving birth to my child, Doctor? Yes. Well, how you see the world might change a bit, that's an inevitable outcome, but... It's the only thing we can do for you, given... Your disposition. Of course, only if you... Don't change your opinion about abortion. We will wait for your decision. Think about this carefully. Both the benefits and what's detrimental. I am begging you. Give it some more thought. Han, please listen here. I can't do nothing. Please don't do that. Don't no, start. No, I will. Listen. You're always the one calling all the shots. It's a very important decision. I want you to take them both. The radio and chemical therapy. I won't. I was wrong not to insist on this earlier, but you shouldn't agree to this operation. What if they make a mistake? What will happen to you and our child? It won't change a thing. We've been waiting for this child. Do you remember dreaming about going to the seaside together? But then what good is that dream without you there? Don't you realize what this is taking us? Even if you succeed in your labor, it will then be too late for you to survive it. We won't get to enjoy any of it. That's not what I want to happen. You'll still have a part of me. Okay, our son. I need you. Do you understand? You! I can't be happy without a kid. I've been all these years. There are many people who are happy without any children. I don't want to lose you. Seth, give me a kiss. Elevator. Hey there. Back at the stadium, you said that you noticed something, right? What was that? Um, I just noticed that you've been scratching a mosquito bite. Really? Mm-hmm. It means that your legs sometimes regain their sensitivity and, you see, your paralysis is, uh, well, you shouldn't be feeling anything. Something must have changed. I'll have it checked out then. I'll be coming to the hospital. Does Nastya know you're here? Well, no. She doesn't have to. We all have to make our purpose. That's true for everyone, even me. I'm still figuring out mine. Nastya's not. She found her purpose as your mom. She isn't my mom. What are you saying? Nastya's your mom. Do you think that she's bothering you just for the sake of it? She's trying to keep you safe, you know? Is that why she doesn't want us to be friends? Well, you see, trust can lead you to disappointment. She doesn't want that for you. Imagine being in her shoes. It must have been difficult for her to realize that she will never have any children. It's like realizing 
that she'll never be walking again. She'll be walking by giving you her love as a mother. Why wasn't she willing to come here? She's just scared. If I just end up disappointing her, things might get worse. You shouldn't worry. I know your purpose. A doctor. If she's a mother, you're a healer. I'm sure about it. Can you help? <clears throat> Please don't worry. I can accept it if my legs are still hopeless. Uh-huh. Good thing Aunt Nasia isn't here. She wouldn't be disappointed. Right? You're a really smart kid. Okay, uh, can you give me three minutes? I really have to speak with someone... Someone I lied to. Tatiana. Hey, please don't worry. I'm all right. Tatiana, I'm sorry that I've wronged you again. It was stupid of me to leave you hanging. Please forgive me. Is there anything that you need from me other than pardon? I think you're amazing. And you're wonderful. Am I? You're very beautiful. You're smart. You're so understanding, and I... I admire everything about you. Did you remember? Yes. I always see her. Her hair and her hands. Sometimes her voice. Do you think about her that much? Who is she? Her name? Where is she? Do you know? I Do couldn't even recall idea? how she looks like. I don't know! But I'm sure that she exists. I don't know if she's my wife or just another friend. But I can always feel her presence in my life. I know this all sounds strange. You're right about that, but I'm used to it. Please listen to me. I know that I shouldn't lie to you. I don't want to. She may be my wife. We may have kids. She may be looking for me. I can't stop thinking about her. Can it be just... your imagination, then? Maybe she's just a friend, or maybe... you don't even remember her face, right? She's not just a friend. I can feel it. In my heart. <laughs> Thank you so much for being honest with me. I want to tell you... what I... what I think. It doesn't... change anything. So tell me, what are you here for? X-ray. Tiomka's case developed, so I want to check what happened. X-ray. All right. Tell me what this is. What do I make of this? Listen, just show me the Grey Doctor. These are the residents from the Fort Hospital. Okay, listen here. I already helped you. That means I'm done with this now. I can take you in for an interrogation. Do you want that? No, of course you don't. Now just do what I tell you and I promise I'll leave you alone. 
This one? Well... Yeah, it is him. Are you sure? Hmm? Of course I'm sure it's him. Look at him. Okay? I'm sure. I gotta get back to work. Thank you. <sighs> Goodbye. Hey, that woman came by again. Well, I don't know where she could have found that old photo, but uh, she was asking for information about that. That doctor. I misinformed her. And she believed me. Yes, I'll keep you uh, updated about it. Bye. Dr. Strelnikov, please see Dr. Kazachenko. Yes, sir. Is there any news? What news? There's a patient. Tell me all about it. So do you want a report? Yes. Why is that? Just because an elementary operation turned into a disaster. So in light of this, I will require a report for every surgery, including the procedure, and all of your plans. All of this will be reported to me. Yes, very well. So we got a tumor at the right temporal lobe. The outlines are clearly visible, which makes it quite fortunate. And what is this? You, you know that? Of course. That's just an oversized case of a hematoma. Metastasis? No, if it metastasized in it, it'd be white. Which I'm sure you're aware of. The hematoma is black, so it's chronic. Obviously, following an injury which occurred some time ago. And the operation? I will have a discussion with a patient who just came around. And then decide. And you'll report to me. Is that clear? Clear. By the way, you do well to forget about that quarter bonus. And go to church. Pray that this doesn't go to court. Otherwise, you'll be paying all legal costs from your unemployment benefit. Now go to your patient. How are you feeling today? I'm all right. Honestly, I'm just a little nervous. <laughs> the doctor who handled the operation is coming. He's a neurologist. Wow, a neurologist. I'm like an attraction. Okay, can you try getting up? Can I remove it? Yes. What's that? What's going on here? What? What is this? This isn't me. Why is it moving? What's happening? Stop! It's moving! I need some help here! Is it, is I'll go call the doctor! Just hold her down! It, Calm down. Listen, it's moved. I couldn't stop you. it. I just don't know what happened. My hands move involuntarily. It's alright. You don't have to worry. We can handle this. <laughs> doctor, what's happening to her? It's a neurological effect of the operation. Don't worry, this is just natural. Excuse me, I'll be back. What have you done to her? Okay, would you please calm down? I'm trying to contact a neurologist. Well, of course, now you want to consult an expert. Cut her up before thinking. What do you mean by that? You operated on her without thinking about it. And now, look at what happened. I think you don't have any idea what you're saying. You're right, of course, because I'm just another nurse. Those are your words, not mine. Excuse me, I have to speak with a neurologist. As you are aware, each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body. The left hemisphere controls the right side, vice versa. As I mentioned previously, the rational and creative aspects are in different hemispheres. Kind of like... a man and a woman sitting in a vehicle. The woman gives directions, and the man drives. The conscious and subconscious. But now in your case, 
The bridge connecting the hemispheres has been severed, and that's why... So now they're on different vehicles. You're absolutely right. Okay, so it's like, uh... The right hemisphere wants to say something. In your words, it's subconscious. And that's the reason why my left hand's trying to kill me. We can't ask your subconsciousness directly, because the speech center is in the left hemisphere. But we have an idea. How we can communicate with your right hemisphere. As long as you don't mind us trying, of course. Tell me, are you left-handed? Yes. I am, but I can write and text with both hands. Well, then that works well for us. So we wouldn't need this. We'll use this thing. A keyboard. You know what it is? Mm-hmm. We'll be asking you questions with the important words missing. The missing words will be written on these cards. Comfortable? It means that... Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, only your right hemisphere will know what the full question is. Mm -hmm. You'll type your answer, with your rebellious left hand, I mean, and in the end, we'll read the full question. Let's start. Tell us, what's your favorite... Loaf. Let me guess you asked what my favorite food is. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, I would have thought I'd answer Twinkies. Mm-hmm. Your right hemisphere seems to think that the best is... Loaf. Interesting. So tell me, what brings you... Says traveling. What was the question? What brings you joy? Mm, so we both like to travel then. That checks out. Mm. Tell me what makes you feel... A baby. Alright, so what's the question about? What makes you happy? Mm hmm Please tell us what do you... So what did I type? What was the question? I'll answer all your questions as soon as we are finished. Please tell us why babies make you feel... This is a unique opportunity to speak with both hemispheres and find out what makes each of them tick. It's easier to talk her into abortion now. Her subconscious already wants it. You planned this from the beginning? Hmm. Too much credit. What does her self-preservation instinct say? The half that's unburdened by moral values, without any question, would choose survival. Without the baby, and without the tumor. Except the other half still wants to keep the baby at the expense of her own life. Mm-hmm. Well, then I suppose we should just listen to the half which prevailed in her head then. I mean, before our operation. Maybe. Oh, right. Did you notice how well her control with her left hand was? Yes. Something did happen. It's different after the injury. The situation's progressed. Is that a good thing or not? It means that... you need to be examined in the city hospital. I believe that you would require a... new operation. They need to show the x-ray to the city hospital. Take this. It's a hot soup. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. 
that's what I call a miracle. <laughs> it's like God sent you to Tiomka himself. There are no guarantees. Well, I'm sure they can handle it. So you're not a hundred percent sure? Alexei, are you there? Let's talk. Oh, it's Dennis, your dear friend. All right. Alexei, you and I need to talk. Open the door, boy. We should go now. I don't have any money. Go away. I need your help, doctor. You must fix my friend quickly before the cops know that we're here. You're wasting your time. <clears throat> Tatiana spoke highly of you. She told us you'd help. So is she a liar? Huh? Tatiana! Alexei! <sighs> Here's our doctor. We've been waiting for you. <sighs> okay, take off your clothes. Tatiana, please bring me all we need for the pre-medication. Uh -huh. No! She'll just call the cops on us. Just staying here. I'm sure you can do without her. Now hurry up. Then lie down. No, I won't. You gotta fix me like this. I'm not gonna lie on the bunk. I can't fix if you don't lie down. Alexei. Tatiana, tell me something. Did you give him hemostatics? No, just a tampon. I would have injected- Injection? How am I gonna ensure my safety with that? You're gonna put me to sleep. Oh, looking busy. Huh. Valak, have you met my good friend of a doctor who said I would come? You wouldn't let me die, would you? Huh? Has it been three hours since? Dog, oh, come on! <sighs> a penetrating wound, blood loss, and possible internal hemorrhage. He's going to bleed out in a few minutes. You kidding me? He won't need my help anymore. <sighs> what are you looking at? Come here and take my gun. Make sure they ain't calling the cops. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Go on, lie down. Take off your clothes. Move your hand. Your hand's on the way. What are you doing to him? Would you kindly shut your mouth? The bullet probably scratched his liver. He lost a lot of blood, Tatiana. Let's operate. Bring me the sterilizer and all the necessary things, scalpels and such. You're going to cut him up? Perceptive. Two amps promedal. I, I told you, don't use drugs! It'll hurt without them. Don't use drugs! I'll manage! Just do whatever you gotta do! Put down your pistol before you shoot someone. Uh, Get over there and hold his legs. Uh, uh, hey, you better not mess this up for him or I'm gonna pull your head off! Scalpel. Uh, 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 damn it! Uh, I'll open you up uh, from right here uh, up to here. Uh, <clears throat> you ready? Yeah, I can take it back. You should take a deep breath. Put the pistol away and secure him with both of your hands. Will you just shut up and do your surgery? <laughs> Tatiana, leave him be. A clip. Another one. Damn it! Oh my god, my head hurts! Do you need painkillers? Oh, god, just give me something for the pain! Mm -hmm. So you can send? Damn it! Do it! Uh, 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 uh,
Wait, 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 wait. Hey, listen, guys. I was just passing by when I saw that man and brought him here. Uh, you can't arrest me for saving someone. Alexei, come on, tell them. What are you doing? Don't arrest me. Listen to me or I'll file a complaint. He needs intensive care. <sighs> That's what he'll get. They'll take him to the hospital. We finally got him after he escaped three days ago. What about the other guy? The usual. Arrest, court, and then jail. Things he's already familiar with. You did good. You didn't panic. You know, you've helped me twice now. And you should know, I've got some updates about your case. Really? Next time, all right? Tomorrow, how about you come and meet me, okay? Thank you. Welcome. Listen, thank you for coming here. I don't know what would have happened. It's nothing, of thank course. Thank you. You're all right. Interesting. So tell me, what brings you... Says traveling. What was the question? What hmm. brings you joy? Hmm, so you both like to travel then. Still that working? Hmm? Tell me you deserve some rest. Here. Yes, I was going to. What's that about? You see, we divided her brain right down the middle. So now what she doesn't know which hemisphere she should listen to. What makes you happy? Mm, kind of relatable. Please tell us what do you... So what's with all these lamentation what's about? The question about? <sighs> I'm just confused, Dad. I'll answer all your questions as soon as we are. One part of me is saying that I should give up and stop searching. It's kind of like a dark room you know you should never enter. But the other part wants to enter the room and turn on the lights. And so I... And so you, Mr. Dr. Pavel. Damn, you're good at this. Yeah. You're not the only one who wants him to be here. Where is he? Please tell us why babies make you feel... I read from this medical... It should be easy to persuade her. Rely mostly on their left hemisphere. Hello there, so ma'am. Means... Good morning. Good morning. What, you want to try another experiment on me? You think I'd be interested? Honey. It's a brilliant idea. Give my hand his own personality. Why don't you do it with my leg neck so you can watch a gladiatorial battle with my own limbs? You're confused. Believe me, I understand. Irritated and angry. But we came here to give you another proposal. It'll rid you of your tumor. But doctor, didn't you tell us that it wouldn't be possible? Yes, at the time that was what we thought. But this case is different. Well, you see, after we divided the two hemispheres of your brain, we found a rare opportunity to learn what your right hemisphere is capable of. Like what? Being an excuse to hit you? Well, there's analysis, then there's that. But it's really remarkable. And things develop better than we had thought. You still can't lose hope. The left hemisphere, you see, is responsible for reason, but yours isn't. Yours is reversed. What that means is if we remove the two more, most of these functions will remain. Oh, thank you. But you'd still lose some of them. Anything else you want to add to that? What will I lose? Speech. You're no longer capable of speaking. So? <laughs> Not a single word, is that it? Yes. Forever? Listen to me. You'd at least live with your loved ones. Wouldn't you like that? You'd still be there for your baby. Isn't that what you want? Think about it. 
You heard the news? News? You know, thanks to Dr. Bondurango's caliosotomy, the patient will now have a surgery. There are complications? Oh no, the tumor will be removed. They have Sir Nikolai's approval. I won't say I'm sorry. You said I'm just a lousy nurse, and that I don't know anything. I don't care if your operation was successful. Very well. And it's still too early for anyone to say what'll happen. But you didn't have the right to say that to me. Mm-hmm. Is that all? You know, you ought to show more respect for your subordinates. Because you... <laughs> you might risk compromising your chain of command with that attitude. <laughs> Yes. Ah, Lexi. Hmm. Sit down. You want some tea? No, no, thank you. You said you have an update? I do. Here it is. Have a read. We didn't find a lot, to be honest. So, this Alexei Kolesnikov was born in this village, and he's dead. Way back since 2012 from pneumonia while he was uh, in detention. It looks like this Alexei has a criminal record. Dozens of theft, multiple counts of robbery to go with it. It's a good thing you're not the person that you were claiming to be, but here's what we'll do. We're gonna make this our little secret. And we still have zero leads about your real identity, where you came from. You know, ideally, I should just go with our procedure and get this over with, but let's just keep things quiet. But why? Make sure nobody else knows about this. All right? Well, except for one man. You ought to tell your father the truth. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think he at least deserves that. And the passport? It's yours. So there's nothing about who I am? Missing for a month, a doctor? Well, I'm still waiting for an answer. I see. Good afternoon. All the papers are here, as well as the new MRI. Let's go. Wait, stop here. Please stop the car. Why? What happened? Did you forget something? No, no. I... I've never left this place. I just don't remember anything aside from this village. <laughs> it feels so weird. Then get out of the car. Get out now. What's wrong with you? That's what I'm thinking. What is wrong with me? What made me listen to a man like you who acts so weird and strange? Get out of my car now. You wouldn't understand because you don't have a son who wants a miracle. All you're doing is giving me false hope. 
He understands and he knows that there is hope. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You know what? I am such a fool to get my hopes up. What am I going to do when they tell me that it's impossible? I knew it. We should have known for sure before saying it to Chomka. And that's the reason why we're going to the city now. We'd better not be late. I don't see any grounds for changing the diagnosis. Please take a look at the MRI. I checked the doctor's diagnosis. It's enough. So that's it? What a great healer you are. Let's go. Valera, hold on, please. The diagnosis was established based on the vertebral fracture, but due to the spinal cord swelling, doctors couldn't see the whole picture. Let me show you. Please, take a look at the x-ray. Here, take a look. The x-ray was done a year and a half ago, and this was taken yesterday. Do you see the difference? It is possible that the spinal cord wasn't damaged. It's kind of hard to say just by comparing these two x-rays. We must hold MRI and fully examine the affected area first. Yes, exactly. And if we're going to analyze this, we can tell that the skin is getting more sensitive again. So the surgery can't be put off any longer. As far as I can tell, um, there's no full atrophy of the muscle tissue. And because the person is old, we can surely expect a quick recovery. You know what? I think you're a neurosurgeon. Oh, no, I'm not. Mr. Chernikov, I'll give you another option. Listen closely. There's one good hospital here with the Department of Neurosurgery. It has world-renowned doctors. They can do even the most complicated operations. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, too. We are going to prepare Dennis for the operation. An aneurysm of cerebral vessels has ruptured, which caused arterial hemorrhaging. I don't understand anything. Oh, that's my fault. My husband keeps telling him he should drop his stupid work because it wouldn't do him any good, but I thought... Ma'am, I know you're worried, but for Dennis, the most important thing right now is the surgery. Do you think he'll recover? You see, you actually lost a lot of time, and I'm sorry, but I don't think it's possible, ma'am. I know they always fall, and I thought it's okay. But in this case, he suddenly felt dizzy, sick. Listen, you need to sign the written consent to the surgical intervention. But look, it says here, how complications are possible. Don't worry, ma'am, it's just on paper. You can trust that our department will do everything we can to save your son. And whatever you do, I can't file any complaints. This is the law, so you have to sign it. As he opens the doors, the little birdie takes off, and when her mother opens her eyes, an ostrich immediately runs past the yard. Cut it, Egor. Why don't you just tell me that you're alone tonight and invite me over so we can hang out? Hello? Marina? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, miss. My name is Olga. I'm a journalist who was recently operated on by Dr. Pavel Andreev. Hello, Olga. Hello, Marina. I'm happy that you've agreed to meet me. Well, that's because you've intrigued me. And also, my father doesn't usually share my number. Come in, please. To be honest, it wasn't that easy to get your number. Dr. Andreev actually almost saved my life. Thanks to him, I'm alive. And I'm able to share his incredible work with others. You said you can help me find Pavel, is that right? I can. I want to. I have connections in every region. Editorial offices, journalists. Trust me, they have a knack for uncovering way more than the police ever could. I just need to know the area of search. In that way, I can figure out from where I can start. Well, this is the area.
Uh, no, over there. <clears throat> These are the routes of all trains passing through the town. Pavel could finally arrive at any station. I already checked some of them, but it was useless. I'm going to use all my connections in this area. We will check all towns and villages, every single hospital. Marina, I promise to do my best. I won't let you down. Okay, have a nice day. As for Tiomka, the news is excellent. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, we all know that the operation was successful. How would you evaluate your efforts? Well, in fact, I'm not really a nurse surgeon, but... What's going on? All Journalists have arrived. Was taken and all the with dirty operation. boots. About the They're asking about that man who's had you drilled. Good to hear I've washed your gown. He can put it on if you like. Excuse me, may I? It's amazing sorry. that you've managed to pull this off. How were you able to stay focused and help a patient with a severe head trauma in such challenging situations? Well, it's my duty as a doctor. Of course I had to take risks, but the experience is crucial. <sighs> I'm not a slave here. It's all the same every time. No Master. matter what I do, I'm always wrong. What? I have some good news. Things are getting better. They sent us to a hospital. Let's go. Chomka and I are looking into it. Dad, I found the website of the hospital. Look, they have a photo gallery here. Okay, Chomka, try to find out if they have a neurosurgery department. Uh, here. Oh, it's their head of the department, Dr. Semyonov. Yeah. And here's the list of the doctors. Look, let's uh -huh. see. His face is kind of unhappy. How many operations has he done? Alexei's going to help us with the email. We still have to wait. Dad actually says that Alexei was told that the operation could be done right Chomka, here. Chomka, my dear, oh, don't yeah. worry. I'm not worried, Mom. Okay, I'm going to call on my friend Vova. I'll be right back. Okay, but take care. Do you think it'll be all right? Let's wait for an answer first. When Alexei and I were going to the hospital, I almost changed my mind halfway. But why? Because I thought, what if Chomka gets disappointed by now? I don't want to give him any false hope. Also, we're not yet even sure if they'll agree to do the operation. Let's just wait. Maxim, Maxim, wait up! Come here, quick! What happened? It's your patient, Dennis. He's now awake, but he's acting strange now. He's even scared the nurse. <sighs> those specials! They're all please, in the drop! Just relax, just I relax. said specials! They're all in Easy the drop! Sir. Please, just calm down. Lita, find the neurologist. The one who consulted Dr. Strelnikov, and then bring her here. He's running after the tail, and Easy. the safety wire is for the ellipse. Yes. It's the safety wire. It's smiling for the ellipse. Dennis, I'm going to ask you some simple questions. And then you're going to try to answer a yes or no. You got it? It's Asia? Of course. Of course. Sonny, do you recognize me? Dear, I'm your mother. The wind and the white wall. Are your complications? What have you done to him? Your son's behavior alarms you. It's understandable. However, there is nothing unexpected in it. Your son is still capable of hearing you perfectly well. However, the speech he perceives now sounds like random sounds to him. This is because the speech center had already been damaged. It needs to be repaired. We will take care of it. This disorder is called aphasia. But I can't even talk to him. He doesn't understand me. 
Right now, your son believes that he's answering all the questions, and he thinks that he does it correctly. And when you speak, he doesn't perceive the speech. He understands every emotion very well. Tell me, are you scared? It's acrylic engines. You heard him? He understands emotions. And whenever you want to talk to him, try to avoid telling lies. People with aphasia have inadequate reaction to lies. It's difficult to explain, but they can actually perceive slightest changes in mimics, as well as emotions, and they start to either shout or even laugh out loud whenever they hear lies. You know what? My husband just gave me a cute puppy. <laughs> <laughs> you see now? He knows that I never had a husband. And I can't have a puppy right now. But we'll fix it, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> One more thing. Whenever you talk to him, remember to write notes. He perfectly understands written speech, but you should also pronounce what you write. Take it, you're going to need it for sure. Get better soon. All right, Ginny. Let's try it, dear. Don't look at me like that. Listen, Ivan, you should be ashamed of yourself. Tatiana, why should I be ashamed? Simply because you were so angry that you told Alexei he couldn't even try to help that man. And when the reporters show up today, you were just basking in your fame and enjoying all the attention they gave you. Alexei is the one who should get it. You don't deserve it. What's the big deal about it? They remember this case now, but will forget it by tomorrow. We must protect this clinic's image. Had I told them the truth, I would have mentioned that we actually use regular drills to perform surgeries on patients' heads and its nurses, not the surgeons, who handle the whole procedure. This clinic will be shut down. Who would be responsible? If that patient died back then, it's not Alexei, it did me me. Are you a doctor? What? Oh, it's nothing. So are you a doctor? If you're a doctor, then you're a doctor. If not, then not. Your arm has been going numb. Let's go. So you're the doctor they're talking about, who has appeared out of the blue in the village? Yes, I am. Look at the finger. Is it true that you don't have a degree? Can you not turn your head? No, I have a headache. I took a pill an hour ago, but it doesn't help. Mm. What about a degree? My father heals people and so do I. We'd better talk about you. You often suffer from headaches, throbbing pain, which spreads from the neck to the temple. Sometimes arms and fingers go numb. Yeah, I know. It's because of hypertension. No, it's not hypertension. <sighs> hey, doctor, I'll tell you what. I actually didn't go here to get checked out. I'm here to to do an inspection on behalf of the administration. We just got a signal about this nurse named Koleshnikov. Koleshnikov is knowledgeable and work closely with the chief doctor to treat patients and all that. That's true. Aha. So you're saying you're not going to deny it, huh? Should I? You know better than me. Actually, it's true. Let me remind you that our task is to ensure that all the citizens here will only be treated by qualified professionals. Do you have a headache? No, I don't. Thank you. You won't fool me with those sweet talks. Are you a doctor or a nurse? Do you have a degree or not? No degree. I'm a nurse. All right. And the doctor isn't at his office when he should be. Can you do me a favor? I want you to let him know that he's going to lose his job because of this. 
You need to see a neurologist ASAP. You have vertebral artery syndrome. Blood can't be delivered to the brain. I told you. It's because of hypertension. Don't tell me what to do because you know nothing. Your job is to wash the floor. Wash the floor. But sir, the floor here is clean. Well, how can I help you? Are you crazy, Egor? No, I wouldn't say so. It's just, it's a sort of an experiment. I want to write an article about the fascia, and they badly need your help, so please okay, help me. Okay, let's go. Please, come in. Uh, please stand right there so that he can see you well. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to ask you some simple questions, and you need to give me honest answers. What is your favorite flower? A tulip. Okay. What is your favorite music genre? I like classic. <laughs> okay, it's pop music. <laughs> Tell me, are you in love? No. <laughs> Do you love him? Do you love Bontarenko? No. <laughs> Excuse me, Dr. Bondarenko. Hey, what's going on here? Thank you, Fisha patient. I'm sorry. Uh, come in, take a seat. May I know what are your complaints? Do you think what your nurse is doing is acceptable? Is this behavior normal for you? When you came here, you had a severe headache. My headache has nothing to do with my complaints about him. Do you still have it? I think I don't. Hmm. Okay, let's do it. Let's fire Kolesnikov. Hold on, let me call him. Oh, by the way, let me show you this. It's his job application form. Shouldn't he write for this Hold on. Wait a second. You know, that's not what I mean. But sir, you've mentioned that a while ago. A nurse without a degree examined you, not a doctor. Do you really have an army of doctors here? No, but you had complaints. Oh yes, complaints, complaints. And I can see that. You're happy about it. What's the syndrome that he mentioned to me? It's called vertebral artery syndrome. I'm going to give you a prescription. Is it deadly? Hmm, oh, well... To be honest, if it wasn't diagnosed in time, then yes, it could end up being fatal. Diagnosing it requires more than just a degree, but also intuition and talent. You can't do without it. For your information, I was sent here by the city administration. Some people have a bunch of complaints. Hmm. Shall we react on this? That's what I'm doing now, so don't you worry. I'm going to write a nice report in which I'll say that a doctor has examined me. And the prescription was also given by a doctor. It means that I checked everything firsthand, so to speak. That's it. Have a nice day. And what about the complaint? Complaint? Listen, I think you should keep your Kolesnikov. It's true that a degree doesn't define you as a person. You're right about that. Hmm. What a rich imagination. <laughs> Excuse me. Sergey, hello there. Yeah? Are you assigned to operate Savdeyev? The athlete who got hit? Yes, Yeah, right. that's me. Will you allow me to assist the operation? Why do you ask? Well, it's because to me personally, this case is of particular interest. Um, his prefrontal cortex is damaged, and the zone is very interesting and little studied. Are you hoping to make a discovery? His consciousness is going to change, but I have no idea how much. The nature's ingenuity is unfailing, so what does that mean? Tell me. So sentimental. All right then, come to the operating room in 30 oh, minutes. thank you very much. You're welcome. Just sign here. That woman's personality is so interesting. 
Tell me about it. <laughs> Hello, my brave champion. You really scared I'm, us. I'm so sorry for this. I didn't want to disappoint you. Where is Misha? He must have been terrified now. We shouldn't have taken him to the game. Misha's okay now. He's fine, and he's with your father. So please don't worry about him, okay? How are you? My doctor, look. He's awake now. Can you please give him some painkillers or Dasha, something to ease the pain? Dasha, stop it. Doctor, tell her I'm fine. Everything's going right, to be alright. Right, a nurse will come here shortly and get him ready for the operation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the operation will take about three and a half hours, so you'd better go home now and have no, some no, rest. No, 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 doctor. I'll wait here. I'll stay here with him. Okay, but not here. You can, uh, stay at the corridor. All right. It'll be okay. You hear me? I love you, dear. I love you too, my dear. Dasha, wait. Everything's going to be all right. I'll be fine, so don't worry, okay? All right, let's begin. Come on, Here's let's go. The scissor. Mm hmm. Oh, Dr. Varlamova. The frontal bone is mostly intact, as well as the frontal cortex. So, what did you expect to see here? Dr. Strelnikov, trust me in my experience. Your patient's behavior is going to change quite Gosh. soon, I'm very sure of that. She's right, I read that after such injuries, people may change their habits. Mm -hmm. Their personality <laughs> changes, even their IQ. Mm -hmm. What, seriously? Yes. I'm telling you, many people have become geniuses after suffering a head injury. It's incredible, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. With just one hit, <laughs> they can master the violin. What if every hit on the head <laughs> makes a person genius? Is that possible? Well... All right, that's enough. Unfortunately, we can't say yet because so far, there hasn't been much research on how post-traumatic genius works. But who knows, right? Mm, yeah. You neurologists are scary people. Dr. Strelnikov. Yes? Uh, may I have a look? Please do. This is interesting. These are old papers. Yvonne asked me to bring them to you. Mm-hmm. How about this? Oh, this is the official application for Tiomka's operation. Finally, you've made it. Yes, it's quite a good chance. Well done, Pavel. What's wrong? Sorry to bother you, but as you can see, it's it's my heart. It hurts. What, your heart? It hurts? I think I'm dying now. All right, please calm down. Let's go. Pavel, can you examine him? Okay. No, 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 no. Not him, please. Let it be Ivan. Or maybe I should call the president's doctor. Let's go. Over there. Come on, let's go. Come on, Valera. So when did it start? Just yesterday. I thought it would pass, but this happened. Take off your shirt, please. Okay, take a deep breath. Oh, stop! It's so cold! Just breathe in, sir. My heart is right here in my chest. Just do what I say. Mm -hmm. Okay, lie on the table. Will you start the treatment now? Have you been exposed to cold? Yes, I have. This is no good at all for you. It means that your body cannot fight the disease. What kind of disease? Your body can't fight because the immune system is too weak. That's why your heart suffers. Are you Just kidding me? Just lie down. Don't stand. <sighs> well, doctor, am I going to die? You're not going to die because we'll save you. Oh, thank goodness. This is my guess. Valera, you have to stay in the hospital. But for how long? I don't know. It may be really serious. Oh, no, We're going no. to take all the tests and check everything. <sighs> don't worry, Ivan will do all the tests on you tomorrow. So I'll put you to Ward 2 now, okay? Uh -huh. And please call your family and ask to bring your stuff, okay? Okay. Please don't be stubborn, just lie down. Oh. Alexei, come here. Please take the patient to Ward 2 and assist him. Why is he treating?
transported on a carriage like a prince. <laughs> I put him in isolation. With neuralgia. Hmm. <laughs> Could you explain to me what's going on here? Oh, Ivan. I just couldn't take it seriously. I'm so fed up with his imaginary illnesses. He's absolutely healthy. He can work fingers to the bone. His wife must be struggling. Okay. I'll go tell him he can be discharged now. It's fine. Let him stay. It's okay. It could give our clinic a good image. Exactly. <laughs> Come in now. Happy with what you did? You two scared the man. Anyway, if he wants to be sick, let him stay. Tomorrow I'm going to tell him about his neuralgia. Yeah, Alexei. I'm giving you the list of our patients for today. You need to do the rounds. Mm -hmm. I can go with you. Mm -hmm. So who's next on our list? Tell me. Is it Zinoviva? Uh-huh. Shall I go on my own? No, no. This case is complicated. We need to go together. Mm hmm You seem really down lately. I don't even see you smile. Really? Is she a brunette or blonde? Who? Who? Don't you really know who she is? Tell me, is her hair long or short like me? Her hair's long. Do you love her? Stop it. <laughs> How about me? Do you like me a bit? I do. Really? A lot. <laughs> hmm. Then you must kiss me. Just one kiss and I promise I won't bother you again. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, come on. I really need it. Please kiss me. Okay, I got it. I wanted to find out if you really love her or not, and now I see that you do. So yeah, you can go now. Take it. Go on, with a list of patients. Do it yourself. Leave me alone! Tatiana! Hey, what happened? Are Nothing. you okay? I'm fine. Is your leg broken? No, it's not. Well, you know better, of course, because you're a doctor. Come on, let's get you in the car. I'll drive you home. What the heck is wrong with me? Do you think I'm flawed or wasted? No, of course not. You're neither flawed nor wasted. For me, you're perfect. You're the best. I wouldn't have chosen... I said leave me alone. Give me a break, will you? What do you want from me? Do me a favor and stop stalking me. Don't you have your own life or what? Why are you yelling? Because I'm sick and tired of you following me around. You're so annoying. Very well, then. Hey. Did something happen? No. I just can't wait to walk again. I forgot how much I wanted to recover after the accident, and now I'm ready. But if I'm going to be honest, I'm scared. Oh, 
I was actually wondering who's talking here. Why don't you invite Alexei to come in? Well, I just came to say that Ivan will send a request to the hospital. This won't take long, so don't worry. Thank you. Tyomka. Don't be scared. I'll help you. Tomka wants some tea. I also cook some pancakes. Okay, I'm coming. Okay, okay. I'll tell your dad about the request. You wanted to see me? Yes. Sergey, have you seen the MRI? Yes, he has a spine injury. So you're talking about the boy from that village, right? Yes, and I think his case is possible for operation. What does Semyonov say? He says we have to accept his request, examine and operate him. Well, uh, so what's the problem? The thing is that we already reached a limit for state-funded operations. And I don't think these guys from the village are financially capable. So money's our problem. The problem here is that Semyonov forgot where the money comes from and how subsidies are distributed. And this, this is not my idea. This is about the state budget. And at the same time, Semyonov isn't the official head of the department. Listen, I'm not going to play his games. We have limits, and we have laws. Dr. Kazachenko, because of you, we have these two now. So you make the decision and we'll do what you say. Hey, my brave champion. How are you? I'm feeling the same. Doctor says the operation was successful. Is that true? Yes. It happened so quickly. Wait. Hmm. Why are you still crying now? Please don't cry. I'm just a bit overwhelmed. But don't worry about me, I'm totally fine. Do you have any pain? Like, in your body? My head... My head hurts. It's because you're still under anesthesia. Don't worry, it'll be gone soon. I know. I'm not worried at all because you're an expert when it comes to headaches. <sighs> Sorry, I didn't get it. I know for a fact that you always have a headache. Whenever mom arrives, you have a headache. And every time you get a job offer, you feel dizzy. It's amazing. Uh, dear, I'll stay with you until the morning. Hmm? Until you recover. Okay? You'd better go home. If only you really knew how great it is to spend at least a day alone. I love you so much, my love. I love you with all my heart. But I don't love you. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, but mine. I realized I don't like women. <laughs> I don't like all women because they annoy me. You really can't imagine how awful it is to kiss and hug you, go to bed with you every night, and pretend to be a brave champion. I'm quite surprised it's so easy to tell the truth. I didn't know it was this simple. Dr. Strelnikov! Dr. Strelnikov! He must have gone to grab a coffee. Has something happened? Yes, it has. He removed part of his brain. Now he's saying weird things about me. He isn't himself. Do you understand? I understand. In the meantime, you should calm down first, okay? Take this. I assisted in the operation and it was successful. Your husband's going to recover soon. Is he? He just told me awful things that gave me instant goosebumps. I ask him how he is, and then he... I can't even say it. Your husband has undergone an operation on the brain. 
He just regained consciousness. That's why he's still disoriented now. It seems like he's taken a magical truth serum, you know? He told me earlier, he's gay. Listen to me. You're just exhausted. You need to go home now. You should sleep. Have some rest. Tomorrow you come back here to see your husband. You'll talk. It will be different. So do you think he might be hallucinating? Well, I'm not sure. I think his injury really gave him the courage to open up about things he wasn't allowed to say before. What do you mean? Nobody forbids him from saying anything. Um, Something that is forbidden in his life. But now he's ready to talk about it, his true feelings and desires. And now he doesn't care anymore what other people will think about it. Does it mean... He's really gay? But I'm pregnant. We're gonna be having a baby. Well, Dasha... Mm. Uh, maybe, for now he really thinks that he's gay, and maybe it's not true. All his life he thought that being gay is wrong and unacceptable. Now he can finally say what he really wants and how he feels. Maybe he just wanted to say what he wants in life, or what he thinks he wants. But what shall I do now? You don't have to do anything, as in nothing. Just wait a little longer. You know, fear of getting caught in moral rules will surely come back to haunt him. And this might put him in a moral cage. You'll see. That's it. So he's going to learn how to tell lies? No. He'll definitely forget. But I won't forget it. If you can promise me one thing, that you won't be coming back to our home again, then I'm not going to tell our children any more about what happened. Wait, let me explain. Dasha, please come back! Come on, listen to me! Dasha, please! Dasha, come back! Dasha, please come back! It's unexpected, so I grabbed anything I could. Just come in. I brought you some cupcakes. Why didn't you tell me? I don't get it. Why did you hide this from me? We discussed these gray doctors, remember? Do you get that things might have turned out differently if you had told me sooner? Mm, well... I can explain that to you. So what's your alibi this time, Sergei? What can you explain to me now, huh? <sighs> so what do we do now? Go ahead, tell me. <clears throat> you should have told me everything, Sergei. That Pavel is a great doctor, and he does these operations. Now I understand why he disappeared. But if you had told me about it earlier, it would be easier for me to find him. Did you get my point? How did you know? How did I find it? Remember Fourth Hospital, where you and Pavel were interns? I saw your old photo. And then I found a man who... who told me everything about Bones' operation. And he directly pointed at the great doctor in the photo. He pointed at Pavel. <sighs> yeah, that's it. You know, Marina... <sighs> ah. 
If you didn't love Pavel so much, and if he wasn't my friend, I guess I would have told you everything about it. Does it matter? Still, you should have told me the truth. What do you think would happen after I told you? Would things be different? Would you believe me or not? Well, if... <sighs> That's the truth. That's it. <clears throat> to be honest, I wasn't ready to hear it. It really hurts. Forgive me, Marina. I'm really sorry. Hello? Yes. Can we talk? Yes. This is Olga. I was told about a man who is currently in a hospital in Avdiev. Uh, where? In Avdiev, it's a small town from your list. It's located 120 miles from Rysk. He has amnesia. He matches the description. He even had no shoes. His situation is critical. We must go now. Okay. Okay, I'll pick you up in a while. All right, I'll prepare now. Thank you. Dima, stop it! <laughs> That's not funny. Can't you see? My heart and my nerves are Just really... Just one harder nerve. Uh, screw you! Use your heart that I brought sweets for you. Take it. Enjoy. Uh, no, no, no. Don't stand it, bro. I just came here to say to you. Is Tatiana here? Yes. But you have to knock first. Why so? Just do it. Knock first. Okay then, but why? Just in case. Because of Alexei? Okay, I got it. I've been thinking. What if it's just a coincidence? Maybe he was smashed by a car and he stayed in this hospital. We never know what happened, right? Marina, do you want me to go by myself or what? No, 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 don't worry. I'll do it. I'm fine. I'm ready. You've already warned me about his condition. That's why... I want to know for sure rather than be in doubt. Ah, come in, ladies. This isn't a hospital. We're not mistaken, are we? Yes. Marina. <sighs> well, I didn't know how to tell you. Tell me what? I was just told that... What? We... No. We didn't no. make it. I'm sorry, no. we couldn't. No! It was a matter no. of hours. No. 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 He was really no. close no. to the edge. No! no. <laughs> but we're here to make sure, right? Here. 
He was identified as Pavel. No, it's not him. Calm down. That's not Andreev. Please calm down, Marina. Are you sure it's not him? Yes, of course. Calm down, let's go. Hey, ladies, you need to sign these papers. Marina, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. What do you want? Where's Tatiana? Did you break up with her? Or you just hit it and quit it? Let me ask you this. Do you still have any other fantasies? Because I'm tired of it. You know, man, I feel sorry for uh -huh. you. I see. You know the worm of conscience, uh -huh. and you... Oh, what? What now? What did you I do? You didn't know what you did! Yes, I don't get you it! You really don't get it! Are you being dumb or what? Of course you don't remember anything now, because you keep saying you have amnesia! Tell me, Kolesnikov, is this what you really want? You know that she's my girlfriend. Have you forgotten? I should have left you in that stupid train. Tomas. What? What do you say? Go home or I'll kill you. What the heck did you say? Which train? Tell me, which train is it? That night we were unloading the train. Then we found you in one of the rail cars. You were covered with blood. We checked your pulse, but we couldn't feel it. So we thought you were already dead. We were afraid that they might accuse us because we had an inspection. So we put you in the van and took it to the forest. But we didn't know you were still alive. Son, are you okay there? <sighs> yes, I'm okay. Exceptional, not like everyone else.
Sergey, I need you here again, my friend. I'm afraid it's urgent. I want you to get here as soon as possible. Do you understand? Sorry, I can't. My schedule is full right now. Don't disappoint me. I don't think you'd appreciate me digging around and telling people about your grave misconduct, would you? <sighs> All right, I'm coming. <sighs> What the hell is that address? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Did he stand on the wrong end of a machine gun? Mm hmm, who knows? We have six bullet wounds, three went through, and you should check the rest. I couldn't stop the bleeding. Nothing's helping. His pulse is very weak. So is his blood clotting? Not even a bit. He's a hemophiliac. What else can I do? I was told to remind you about your grave secret. If you don't help us, Marina might just hear about it. So what now, Doctor? And who's that? This guy's brother. He wounded too? No, he got here after. <sighs> hey, come on. You should do something! We don't have time! What the hell should I do? He'll bleed out in about less than 10 minutes. I've only got a scalpel and iodine. I didn't bring hemostatics. This guy needs to have surgery. He needs clips to help with the bleeding. So I, I can't help. Just call an ambulance. Where are you going? Moose said you were a pro. Get back there and help him. Your life depends on it. Go! He's bleeding. One more gauze. The anesthesia's out. We'll do without it. He's bleeding out. All right, hold him down. Okay. Come on. Brother, listen to me. You'll be all right. Try not to move. You gotta endure. You'll be all right. This is why hemophiliacs should always have a hemostatic. Are you sure you don't have one? We didn't know about that. Right, okay. Hold on. What now? Shut up. Stay calm. Brother, listen to me. We'll save you, I promise. You just gotta stay put. You're not gonna die here. Didn't you say you're too tough to die? Come on, bro, I'm begging you. Just don't move. Stay still and hold on. Do you hear me? Yeah, we need to call an ambulance. Don't you dare call an ambulance. Brother, easy. Easy. You can bury him. You want me to bury you, doctor? Find someone else to talk to from your endless list of contacts who are stupid enough to believe anything that you say. Anna, please hear me out. I don't have that kind of contact. Do you really think that I'd still believe you now? Why don't you try calling someone else? Sergey. Hey, Sergey. Anna. They're going to kill me. I can't make it. His lungs perforated. He's shot. I can't help. They'll kill me. I need your help. What? You there, Anna? Just get yeah. out of here! Listen, I need a, a hemostatic sponge and a clotting agent. I wanted to say... All right, all right. Wait for me. Just calm down. <sighs> Sergey, calm down. I'm on my way. Understood? Right. So what else? Oh, I need something yes, stiff. Yes, possible. So why not? We plan on discussing it at the meeting tomorrow. 
There. And this. She spills the bean about us. No, she'll keep quiet. How old is the patient? 45. You related? Yeah. You got the same blood type? Yeah. You'll be fine. I'm here. Direct transfusion? No option. So how'd you get into this? You saved my life today. Who are they? I think we should report them to the police. I'm sure they'll help you. Hmm. If we report them, I'm done for. Do you remember that girl who got hit by a car who I couldn't save? Well, that day they called for me. And the patient was a scumbag who hit her. Yeah. The bastard was drunk. I... I could have helped him, but I didn't. I gave him painkillers. Told him he's alright. He died soon enough. Then that night, I found his body in my trunk. Was that the night when you came back all dirty? Yes. Don't worry. I'm sorry. I'm worried for you, Sergei, not myself. We'll make it through. <sighs> Should we go now? Hello? Hello. So what's the news? It's very good. They agreed to give me an operation. <clears throat> they sent me this email with tons of forms to fill. Here, I printed them. Uh -huh. We have to fill them all in. All right. Dad told me that you can do all of it on your own. And he's right. Well, it says here the operation is advisable. Consulting specialized doctors. 
and an examination in the clinic. This doctor also thinks that you'll be able to walk afterwards. I've already found his photos on the website. This Kazachenko seems to be the boss there. This guy will handle the surgery. Sergei Strelnikov. It says their clinic's cutting edge. Well, then that's good. I'm sure that you'll be all right. I'll fill up the papers. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. Well then, have you read it? Well, I have. It says they're certain that they can help Tiomka. If only their certainty could solve all our problems. Have you seen how much this operation would cost us? I've never seen that amount all my life. Of course I could sell my house, but seriously, look at it. Who'd buy that? We should ask Yvonne to talk to the doctor who answered the email. What for? Well, to find out the schedule of the operation. You realize it costs twenty thousand dollars? <sighs> okay, Nika, show me. We're landing. <laughs> so where is this magical dress that you mentioned? Here. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? It suits you very much. Don't I look like Snow White? You're as pretty as her. Nika, I'll try to be on time for your evening rehearsal. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you're right. All right, we have to go now. Right, okay, let's go. Wait, I need to do something first. I have a patient scheduled for a consultation. Then I'll see you at the conference hall. It's six weeks now. Congrats, Anna. Are you serious? What's this? Should I retake the blood test to be sure? Anna, there's no room for doubts. Although you can retake it if you want to. Oh no, thank you. Well, if you ask me, you should be thanking the lucky guy who you work with to make this little angel. Yes. Look, the conference is about to start. Yes, I know, I know. Well, I can't make it tonight. I have a meeting, so just tell her that I love her and buy her flowers for me, just like I promised, okay? Right. I'll call you after. Can we start now? Yes. Yes. Well, my patient, uh, my patient is eight years old, and unfortunately, her colleague from the Children's Hospital has had an accident and is in critical condition. Therefore, they made a decision to... Transport this patient to our hospital. The MRI reveals the tumor in question, medulloblastoma. It's located between the patient's cerebellar hemispheres. Uh, the tumor has recently been growing significantly, and as a result, uh, it's constricting the patient's uh, tentorium and brainstem. The cerebrospinal pathways will likely be occluded. Any further delays are ill-advised. I've seen suggested course of action for the operation, and I have a question. Anesthesiologist, Dr. Zabalkina, this is for you. Tell me, please. As we know, the tumor is located in the posterior cranial fossa. Therefore, we'll have to conduct the operation with the patient in a position facing downward. What if the patient requires 
Resuscitation. Can you tell us what you should do? Excuse me, sir. I've already worked with such patients and... Mm, I know what to do. Very well. And your assistant will be you, Markov. Understood. All right, uh, hold on for a sec before I forget. That MRI from a village hospital and its surgical plan, have you seen it? Yes, and I have to say it's a flawless proposal, which is quite unexpected for a village doctor. Hmm. You think you can handle it? Of course. All right, well then. Without delay, you should inform that village hospital that we're ready to follow through with the operation as soon as the patient arrives here. With all due respect, you're in no position to give us orders. Pardon? The hospital is ready to provide top quality medical services, given that they can pay for the operation. Listen to me. Whether they pay for it or not, we'll talk about it at a later time. Listen to me, Dr. Semyonov. Everyone here respects you, your achievements, and your talent. But you no longer have the right to give us instructions. You are just another patient. I've already contacted the parents. All right, everyone. Good luck to you and our dear patients. Right. Uh, please keep up the good work, everyone. Are you okay? Here, let me hold you. Are you cold? The doctor is on his way to tell us everything. Nero! Hello. You ready for some action? It's good to know. In the battleground, we'll be wearing masks, like so. We're all your friends. Don't be afraid of us. Okay? Well, the anesthesiologist is mm -hmm. coming. We're all rooting for you. Good luck. Dr. Strelnikov, I would like to ask you something. Yes. Uh, could you please take this with you in the operating room, doctor? But it's okay if you don't want to. But please, I'm begging you. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. Very much. All right, we're gonna... We're gonna begin soon. Wait a second, please. Anna. Hmm? A moment, please. Take this for me, please. Put it over there. All right, continue. Uh-huh, thank you. Are we clear? The patient is ready. Scalpel. Suction? Take this, please. What? Are we having some back pain, doctor? <sighs> Osteochondrosis? I won't be needing surgery, will I? No, you won't. Whew. We're almost finished here. Dissector. Anna, how are things going? Everything's normal. All right, and the patient? I'm not laughing. Just a little more. Hey, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just that my nephew is the same age as him. It makes me think, um... Come on, it's okay. Calm down. All right, let's finish this. All right, doctor. Everything here is looking normal and stable. Stop! Stop, 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 stop! 
Easy, calm down. Damn I'm it. cleaning, 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 cleaning. The pressure's still normal. I'm cleaning, Remove cleaning. The blood. <clears throat> Dr. Markov, you have to calm down. Just clean the blood. I can't find a rupture. What's going on here? Looks like a hemorrhage. They may have torn the vein. How? While they're aspirating. More, Dr. more, Dr. Seminov. Pressure's decreasing. Go on, go on. We're all right, sir. Forceps, come on, come on, come on! Pressure's decreasing. Yes, understood. I can't see anything. Hurry. He's bleeding out. Come on, give me that! Put the hemostat, I'm suctioning. Tachycardia. There's nothing. I can't see. We should turn him over to his back. I can't see. Right. Sergey, you gotta close the patient's wound so we can turn him around. Wait, Anne. Wait. You have to do something. I'm begging you, Sergey. Yes. Forceps. Right. Starting the close chest massage. No. No. I'm sorry. We haven't run out of time yet. Sergey, constrict the vein with your hand. Okay. Be careful. You know where the wound is located. You saw it on the microscope. Now close your eyes. Calm yourself. Remember what happened. Can you see it? All right. Now secure the vein. Thank you, sir. Do it. His pulse is back. Done. Well done, guys. You saved his life. Come on, Sergey. Let my cop finish this. Get some rest. Anna, you too. Get yourself some rest. You did well. Come on. That's too close for comfort. Ooh. Yeah, I agree. <sighs> At least it's over now. In 24 hours, he'll be back with his mother sharing an embrace. Good job. I don't deserve that, but thanks. <sighs> Sergey, there's something I have to tell you. You're breaking up with me? No. I want you to know that I'm pregnant. What? Are you... Yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I just found out this morning when I got the laboratory test result. <laughs> Anna, that's crazy. This is Hold great. On. Congratulations. I won't force you also, to marry me, and I'm not expecting anything from you either. I don't understand what you're saying. Sergey. <laughs> oh my god. Sergey, listen, I already have everything that I ever wanted. 
Oh, you're full of nonsense. And I'm well aware of our, our current situation. <laughs> oh, to hell with the situation. We'll be all right. We can just leave this place behind. All that matters to me is that we're together. I, I, I mean, maybe that isn't what you want? No, I'd like that. Good. So, what now? <laughs> Did, are you kidding me? Did you really just agree to live with an imbecile? Anna, are you there? They're already done. We just have to wake up the patient. Mm. Be there in a sec. <sighs> Alright, yeah. I have to get back to the patient. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. Guess that's luck. She's pregnant. So please kindly take action. Yes. Hello there. You ready to go home? So did anything else happen? Like a heart attack? Nothing like that. I think I'm fine now. How could I ever let you go? You're sick to the core. After you come home, you'll just write me a couple of complaints, just like these. Bad treatment, or another. But why would I do that to you, Dr. Ivan? Okay, you're discharged now. You may go. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Excuse me. How are you, Ivan? What a long face. Is the crown too heavy? Your fans will be begging for an autograph. You are amazing on television. Tatiana, I'm not proud of myself. Hmm. I didn't have any other options. Just try reading these criticisms. Why? Here, read this. I understand, Soya. She has her finger and everything. But Dima has nothing to do with this. I thought that I could trust him. That's why it hurts. Who gave this to you? You remember the Inspector Alexei examined? Yeah. He was sent here to look into whatever complaints there are against me. Well, he was good to me. He turned around, closed his eyes. Good afternoon. Hello well, there. Hello. And that's the point. Tatiana! Do you know? He's going through hell, that boy. <laughs> they can't afford the payment. What? What payment? The hospital stated that they're ready to conduct a surgery on Tiomka, but they could not pay for it. It's impossible. Where they can possibly find that sum? Hold on, I don't understand. How much do they need? Twenty thousand dollars. Imagine that. I see. That poor boy. Listen, there must be a way. My mother is trying to sell my father's lot, so maybe she can help us with that. Sell the lot? As if someone ever needed it. No one will be interested in that. No, we're going to have to sell five lots of that kind. Chomka? Chomka, come eat with us. We have pancakes. I'm not hungry yet. Have you told him everything? No, it was in the contract, but he didn't read it. Listen, everything will be all right. I know you don't like talking about this, but miracles will bring people to their happy endings, I'm sure. Tatiana, there you Look are. Look into my eyes and be honest. What? Did you sign that complaint? No, 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 you can ride with me. Come on, did you sign it? 
Tatiana. Does it really matter who signed that thing? Hmm? Tatiana, I'm sorry that I did that. I, I don't know why I did that. I was so angry and... And then Zoya suggested a complaint. You're just a rascal. I should have known. Tatiana! Uh, you see, as soon as that guy came here, to our village, everything just started to go downhill. You know him? Of course you don't. Nobody here knows him. He was down, lying like a mongrel with a hole on his head. And now he's an angel? It's not my fault. You can't blame me. My time's precious. And you deserve none of it. Hello, Tatiana. I came here for a reason. Ah. Uh, then, will it be Alexei? You want to talk, right? Uh, I don't know. It's in the past. Uh, I have a different problem. Um, Tiomka couldn't pay for the surgery. Look, I can't help. Just a manager. I'm almost a pauper. Now, I'd help him if I can, but I just don't have That's the... not what I'm asking, Zoya. I was thinking about every single one of our neighbors. If everyone asks their friends for help, they can bring their donations here to you. And, Zoya, you'll apologize to Alexei. He did a lot for Tiomka. That's what I told you. Very well, then. All right, go round and round and one, round. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And twirl, and twirl. That's good, that's good. Keep going. Here I am. You took your time. I thought you had to stay late at your clinic. I barely made it, thanks to the traffic. I was looking for flowers. Flowers? Well, yeah. Why wouldn't I? She was worried. I had to get some. All right, you have good form. Pay attention to the music, Nika. How much did I miss? Not a lot. Did you film it? Of course. Just like that. How All right, this is what we practice. Then you take a closer look. Uh -huh. Okay, guys. Yes, slowly. that's it. Yes. More All right. Your cry, faces. cry, cry. <laughs> Good. Then you guys reach for the sky. More longing on your faces. Good. Then you walk around her. That's good. That's good. I like that. Stand up, Nika. Come on, Nika, that's your cue. Nika? Nika! Nika! Come on, Nika, you're dragging everyone behind! Nika, stand up! Turn off the music! Nika! Max! Maxim, listen, Dr. Kasachenko is here with an ambulance. The patient? Dr. Kasachenko's daughter is unconscious. They want Sterlinkov, but he's having a surgery. She just fainted all of a sudden. Uh, Igor, please prepare the MRI room right now. Yes. Where are we going? We'll be examining Nika. Find out what happened. Doctor, why are three on standby? All right, then. I want Sterlinkov yes, here. Yes, he's been informed. All right, everyone, let's hurry. Doctor, Dr. Kasachenko, please calm go down. On, go on, go on. You stay here. You can't go inside. Wait, we'll conduct can an examination and find out sure what happened. I'm sure she'll be all right.
How could this be? Inconceivable. She's still a kid. Maybe... Maybe we should retake the MRI. Just in case. It's highly unlikely We already that at checked her everything. Age. The results are apparent. I'm sorry, but... It is what it is. <laughs> oh my... Oh my god. <laughs> Doctor, don't lose heart yet. We're going to save her. Yes, yes. 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 Your wife is still yes. waiting outside. You should support her as well. Dr. Semyonov, he's on his way. We'll find a solution with his help. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. If I may, what happened? I mean, why, why are you so quick to sell it? <laughs> Everything's still in there. Come on. You were the one telling me to sell it, weren't you? So here it is at half price. You're lucky to have a generous friend. Yeah. Just throw away the stuff that you don't like. Well, I'm just looking for a fresh start, you get it? Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's uh it's all wet in there, huh? Alright, <laughs> so you wanna try to take it back, right? <sighs> There's no going back for me. Alrighty. <clears throat> Listen to me. Uh, I can't give you a price yet, but uh, I'll give you an advance if you want. And the rest is uh, tomorrow. Huh? Okay? We good? good. Mm hmm. So tomorrow, just bring the other half of the payment to Sawyer. Say it's for me. Sure. And finally, I need your signature. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Mm hmm. This Sawyer, is she your accountant? Mm-hmm. Kinda. Um, so boss is over. All right, you've got another 400 with us. Ala, please make our guests some tea. If you prefer coffee, give us a heads up so we can arrange it. Hello there. Yes, hello. You can thank Antonina for this. Chomka's one of her students. Here's from the faculty. And then Maria will bring more from them tomorrow. It was all so unexpected. We didn't have much time. We couldn't call everyone about this Antonina. This is all what we have and... Is this her monthly salary? She was saving up for repairs. <sighs> all right, thank you. Mitrokin is giving a hundred dollars. Mm, thank you. <laughs> well, repairs can always wait. This is more important. Mm. Very well. Here, thank you. A hundred dollars. It's for me and oh, my wife. All right, sure. Have mm. a good day. Thank you. Pardon. A donation for my dad. Thank you. What's up? How did you become aware of this so quickly? Uh, because of Tatiana. Here's a hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you. Please tell Andre I said thank you. Okay. As soon as we have everything we need, we'll let everybody know by, let's see. A sign on the front door, perhaps? Uh, thank you and good luck. Please work. <laughs> Let it work, please. <laughs> Let me walk. <laughs>
I'm begging you, Dr. Semyonov. You're the only one who can do this operation. I... I sent the MRI scans to Germany. They can take Nika, but they couldn't guarantee anything. Listen, Mikhail. I will not operate on Nika. Is it because of our differences that you won't save her life? Um, no, don't get me wrong. I can't do surgeries anymore. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I can have the Ministry authorize you for the operation. The Ministry isn't the problem. So now you know the reason. Side effect after your operation? Yes. I can follow the operation, of course, but the best I can do is advice. We'll convene a council tomorrow. I asked Gromov to attend. I told him to use all his connections. We'll surely find a doctor. Someone who's capable of doing the surgery. Uh, Dr. Strelnikov, the boy's mother wants to have a word with you. Yeah, okay. How is it? Well, I don't really like this thing I'm Come seeing on. here. You gonna go home now? I'll come a bit later, okay? I'll see you. So what if we try another angle? Oh, look, it's all swollen right here. Hmm. Um, when you find a solution for Anika, call me. All right, I'll see you. Understood. I'll go ahead. Yeah, take care, Goodbye. Anna. Thank you, Dr. Stralnikov. Thank yes. you so much, doctor. <laughs> you know, you, you don't have any idea. You, you just saved two lives today. Right. I won't live in a world without him. You saved both of us. 
You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for lending this. It did help, right? Of, of course it did. All right then. Live a long life. Of course. Stay healthy. Good luck. You're all right. Marina. Hey, so what brings you here? I could have hailed a taxi. At least I wouldn't have bothered you. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. I have something to say. What is it? I'm going to leave the city. To where? Uh... Sergey! Hold on. Yes, hello, it's me. I was just about to call uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> We're all worried for her. Of course I am. Yes, yes. It is. We're all surprised. <laughs> We're looking for a competent uh, neurosurgeon. <laughs> uh, we will uh, hold a council meeting. You'll come here tomorrow? Uh huh. I appreciate <laughs> it. See you. All, all right. right, take care. All right. Take care. So, you said you're going somewhere? Dad, I know where Pavel is. Bye. All right, where is he? Well, I was just watching the news on the television. He's in a village called Yagodnoye. I'm going there. What's he doing there? Uh, working at the hospital. How have you been? Well, don't listen to me. I... For a month and a half, thought that I killed my best friend. He's still alive, you know? Marina found him. Where? Who told you to interrupt me? But where? Listen to me now. I don't give a damn. Some old village called Yagodnoye. You will forget my number. You will. Good riddance. Zora! Zora! What, you think you're a phoenix? I'll put an end to your delusions then. Zora! Bring Lanky to me. You only have 30 minutes. Go on. I was thinking you wouldn't come. Yet here I am. Everything's... gonna be different. I promise you.
Oh, it's you. What are you doing here, huh? Is your car broken? No, my car is all right. I want to sell it. Do you want to buy? Are you kidding? I cannot even afford a bike. So you want to buy a ticket? Where to? Whatever I feel like going. Why is that? Stop asking me questions. I'm going to whatever the road takes me, all right? What about Tatiana? I thought you were dating. I don't care. Now here's the money. I don't know how much, so keep the change. You might regret it. I don't need your advice, okay? Just do your job and make it quick. I'll do what I want to do. Attention passengers. <laughs> the train number 40C going to Yagodnaya is about to arrive at platform. Get by. Attention passengers. The train number 40C going to Yagodnaya is about to arrive at platform 2. Please be advised. The train number 40C going to Yagodnaya is about to Thank you, miss. All right. Sure. Please take care, ma'am. Excuse me, how do I get to the hospital from here? Can't you see we're busy here? <sighs> Hello, how do I get to the hospital from this station? Thank you. Take bus 22. It stops near the station. You can wait there. Thank you. No problem. Hey, miss. Which hospital? Yagodnoye? That's right. I can give you a ride if you'd like. That would be nice. Thank you. Let's go. For you. What is this? Go ahead, read it. It says that they have set the date mm -hmm. for my operation. In five days, two hours, and... Can you believe it, son? You won't have to wait long. What's the matter? Aren't you happy about it? It's just... We shouldn't have bought the wheelchair then. Oh, Chomgut, you don't have to worry <laughs> about it, all right? I just didn't expect it to be so soon. This is great, son. It won't be long before you can start walking again. You have to discuss about who will accompany him to the hospital. That's easy. I'll just take the week off and I can go with him. Oh, well, that's great then. Well, son, what do you think? What do you want to do? Who do you want to go with you, huh? Mother. <laughs> All right, then. Your mother will go with you. I'm excited. So what brings you here? I'm looking for someone. Pavel Andreev. Do you know him? No, I don't. And I never will. I'm leaving this town. Why is that? This town seems really nice. You're right, this place is lovely. I'm from out of town too. I thought this is a great place to get married and settle down, but it didn't work out. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. It's a long story, I hope you won't mind. That's fine. You know how lucky someone is if they find their soulmate? I do. Well, I thought I found my soulmate, so I gathered my courage and proposed to her. Turns out that was a big mistake. I thought things could have been different if I hadn't done it. And then this? This Dorn Prince showed up after so many years and Tatiana forgot about me. I think it's for the better. I don't know. 
their colleagues and like-minded, plus he's mysterious. And me? Just a simple man. She just doesn't care about me anymore. She does not care that I could not sleep thinking about her. That every time I close my eyes, all I see is her face and it drives me crazy! Did you tell her about... what you feel? She won't even listen to me. It doesn't matter. You must tell her about it. Tell her about what you really feel while you still can. Because when you let that opportunity slip, you may not have another chance. She just beat him up, that Alexei. So we're here at the hospital. That was really quick. Thank you. How much do I pay you? You don't need to pay. In fact, I actually owe you for the company. So thank you. Are you sure? I am. Consider it my payment for the therapy. Can I say something? <laughs> what? I... I meant what I said on our way here. Talk to her. Before you leave. There are people who are still looking for their soulmate. But you have found yours. So don't let her go. No, I won't. Good luck. Tatiana? Hey! Look, Dima, I don't want to talk to you about Alexei or anything at all. Tatiana! Wait up. What? I'm leaving for good. Oh, really? You can't be serious. Here's my ticket. I've already booked my trip. <laughs> You're kidding. You're going north. You want me gone, right? Unless you change your mind, then just let me know. All right, then. Good for you, Dima. After what I have learned about you, your issue with Alexei, and the whole story with the letter, it's best that you leave. I don't want to see your face around here ever again. Right. Can we turn back time? When it was just you and me, without Alexei. What do you mean, Dima? What does this have to do with him? What if he wasn't around? Bye, Dima. Enjoy your little trip. Hold on. Tatiana! Your car's blocking the road, Dima! Good afternoon. I'm on my lunch break. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm looking for uh, Pavel Andreev. Do you know where he is? I don't know anyone with that name. Really? Mm, maybe Tatiana brought a patient without my knowledge. Oh, no, he's not a patient. I think he works here with you. Look, miss, I may be old, but I know everyone here. <sighs> That's weird. I saw him with you when you were on television. Here, I'm absolutely sure it's him. You saved a man's life in this hospital by drilling a hole in his skull. Both of you were in the interview. Look. Oh, Alexei Kolesnikov. He works here. His name's Pavel Andreev, not Alexei. No. That's our nurse, Alexei Kolesnikov. Are you sure? Absolutely. Although, uh, he went missing. <sighs> For about 15 years. He only came back here about a month ago. But he told us that he lost his memory. Um, I'm sorry, Doctor. What happened? 
When his father found him, he was badly wounded and couldn't remember anything. Total amnesia. Then he might be Pavel. I'm not sure. The locals seem to remember him. And who is this Pavel? A doctor. Oh, neurosurgeon. Hmm. Hold on. Actually, this operation was Alexei's idea. To decrease the brain pressure. And, uh, of course, I didn't let him do it at first. However, the way he performed the operation on that man, what you're telling me is making sense. Anyway, I must talk to him as soon as possible. Here's the thing. The father is aware that Alexei is not his son. But he had the fact from him and took him as his own. It will be a mess if but word still, goes out. But still, I have to find Pavel, doctor. Please, where can I find him? When you exit out of the hospital, turn right and go to the cafe. They know everyone there. Make sure to ask for Alexei Kolesnikov and not Pavel. I understand. Thank you, doctor. Excuse me. I have the papers. Here. We're going to the city tomorrow to register the deal and to finalize things. Are you serious? Do you think I'm joking? I bought a ticket going north. Aren't you being impulsive, Dima? I have all this planned. I already sold the house while you were resting in the hospital. My decision is final. How about me? How would I survive without you? What do you mean, how would you survive without me? You'll be fine, I know that. You'll have a job and ask for Tatiana. We're over now. So starting tomorrow, the company will be in your hands. No way, man. Also, here's the key. My car is yours now. A lot of this stuff doesn't even rhyme about you. Of course. I know this man. He dropped by just earlier. Mm. Do you know where I could find him? Why do you ask? I need to talk to him. He looks exactly like the man I've been looking for. But Alexei doesn't have a twin brother. He is an only child. Then maybe this is him. No way. He left you too, huh? Then I'm pretty sure it's him. So where can I find him, ma'am? All right, let me tell you something, miss. I know, that man is a huge jerk. Well, I shouldn't say that. After all, he's done for Tiomka, helping him get well, and for free even. But I'm no fool. A single act of kindness will not change what I think of him. And you, miss? Did he even treat you very well? Can't say. I guess I'm right. I thought he changed. Nastya! Come here. So this woman here... Hey, what's this about? ...came from the city to look for Alexei. I guess your friend likes to be okay. involved with a... Bye. ...with a lot of women, huh? Do you know him? Yeah. Well, not Alexei. But I need to see him. Do you know that he lost his memory? Yes, I know. Come on, Nastya. His amnesia won't hide his true colors Mother. forever. I have told you before these kinds of things would happen. He went to check on a patient. Listen. It's not that far from the cafe. Oh, thank you. You know Alexei doesn't deserve all of this hate, Mother. And I don't care. Can we not do the injections this time? It makes me really sick and dizzy. You'll uh. be fine. You're always sick and dizzy. Yeah. That's why you need these shots. Mm. Oh. Hold it, please. I'd rather take some herbs instead and not the chemicals in these injections. Okay, we will prescribe you herbs, but promise me you'll take them regularly, all right? Of course I will. Every day. I will bring them to you. What? We'll be leaving now. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Look at him, dear. He looks like his father. But he got his mother's eyes. I don't think he came to say goodbye. He wanted you to stop him. I never ask anyone to do anything. If he wants to stay, that's up to him. Tatiana, wait. There's something... that I need to tell you. You, of all people, should know the truth. Well, what is it? I am not Alexei.
I don't know where Alexi is. I have no idea at all. A woman came here earlier looking for him as well. I told her the same thing. I'm trying to work here. Stop bothering me. Think hard. Are you sure about that, Doctor? Well, she said that Alexei may actually be someone named... Pavel Andreev. And? I told you I don't know where he is. He might be at home with his father. Those two live somewhere in the woods. How do I get there? Why don't you go out there and ask around the neighborhood? <clears throat> this is a hospital and not a help desk. Hi there. Hello. What is your name? Don't you know me? I don't. But you've been on my mind. I'm Marina. Semyonov. And me? Your real name is Pavel Andreev. <laughs> Someone seems to be out of character. Oh, really? I don't know. Why don't you tell me what's bothering your mind? There's nothing on my mind right now. I'm all right. Don't worry. <laughs> I bet you're thinking about my Alexei. Mm, well, you're right. I guess I was just hoping for nothing. Well, it's really not your fault. It's all right. We can't always be lucky in life. Tatiana, I only have my son. And I treat you like my daughter. It would be great if things work out between you two. However, the heart wants what it wants. Love cannot be forced, you know. <clears throat> I wondered if Alexei had another life. Maybe he had a wife, some kids. If we found him here, it means that somebody else lost him. I think. Right? What do you think? There must be a reason for it, if that's the case. So at first, Bumblebee looked like an old car, but he turned into a brand new one. And who is this Bumblebee you're saying? It's a yellow car with black stripes on the hood, and he's part of this hey there, of kiddos. robots. I'm looking for Alexei. You know where he is? Oh, you're going the wrong way, mister. You should have taken the other street going to- But, there's another way here. 
Remind her to take these herbs mm -hmm. two times a day, all right? I understood. It's a must. Thank you, you so take. much. Whoa! Is anybody home? Please don't let him know I'm here, all right? You got it. Hello? What do you want? She's here. Alexis' girlfriend is looking for him. Girlfriend, you say? Yes, that's right. She came to... What? What girlfriend? Will you stop with your stupid jokes, Dima? Oh, you're here too. No, Tatiana. I'm not joking. I met her at the station and drove her to the hospital. At first, she went to Ivan's office, then to the cafe. She has Alexis' photo on her phone. He has his life outside this town, so he cannot be with you. And uh, his real name is not uh, Alexi, but Pavel. I have to leave now. I've got work. Hold on. Wait. I said wait. I said I've got work to do. Tell me the truth. Have you known? You two old men. Unbelievable. What have you done, you two? Do you actually see how wrong this is? The man may have had his own life in this city. A family. Or even a partner. But you two brought him here. Lied to him about his identity, telling him that he's your long-lost Alexei, who's maybe dead now. Doesn't that sound insane You're not to you? yourself, Dima. You left him alone in the forest to die. Do you think I didn't know about it? Do you think I wanted to leave him there? I regret it. Every single day. I've had sleepless nights thinking about it. <laughs> May I have some water? On the stove. I'm sorry. I've only learned about the truth earlier today. It's all right. I knew that he isn't my son. What I did was wrong. It's just that. But you have been calling him son from the beginning. Yes, I know. That was selfish of me. You know, I think they wanted me to be there, Alexei. And I enjoy being him. But I think Father knew the truth all along. He just couldn't tell me. Do you remember my dad? Hmm, no. Dr. Nikolai Semyonov. No. So you don't remember him. But you must have recalled some things. How about Strelnikov? Oh, Strelnikov. He's a doctor too. I saw his photo on the website. But he's also your friend. You went to university with him. <sighs> Even when I saw you today... I couldn't clearly remember who you are. Hold on. If you don't, how did you recognize me then? It's your hair. I remember them. The way they flow. Like this? Yes? So you work at the hospital? Yes. I seem to remember my skills. And that is what brought me here to you. Work has always been your life. But I want to know more. Help me remember. All about me. My work. And about us. Do you really want to know? Go! 
Go away. Hey, leave me alone. Get lost, you mutt. Stupid dog. I'm here now. Stop the knocking. Blusher, go away. Hey, you Vasily? Yes. I need your son. Where is he? He's not home. Not yet. Yeah, you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm all right. Hey! Open the door! If I had not seen that news, I wouldn't know where to find you. I need to wrap things up here first. Take your time, okay? Things may not be easy. How so? Hey, I know Alexei's in there. Open up! Get out of here, you mother. I'll kill you. Who is that man outside? He's looking for Alexei. Vasily? Good take, take the agenda upstairs now. What's happening? Hurry up! Should I call the Come cops? On, Tatiana, let's go. Who is there? I don't know. What's with the rifle then? While I was looking for you, a lot of unpleasant things came to light. Are you really sure you want to know them? What do you mean? <laughs> go ahead. What you waiting for? Shoot me, old man. And father? He's inside. He's inside. Dima. Tatiana, it's over now. Dima, you're bleeding. Were you shot? It's, it's just a scratch, all right? Are Don't you worry sure? about it. The ambulance is on its way. Hang in there, please. I can't make it. Please don't speak. My time has finally come. Save your energy. Forgive me, my son. I know that. You earned Alexei. But I could not tell you. I hope you're not mad. I'm not mad. Not at all, Father. Thank you. My dear son. What did I do? You? It's not looking good. 
26, 27, 28. Dr. Pavel Andreev will be operating. Dr. Andreev. Dr. Andreev? Dr. Andreev, you're the doctor. Scalpel, please. Hello. Hi there. I'm a doctor. I have to tell the people the truth. Look, uh, can you come to the station tomorrow? All right. Take care. Go. Pavel. I need some time. I remember him. Remember who? Do you know him? Who? I've heard what you told the police. We can talk about all of it tomorrow morning. Tell me everything. What do you remember? I remember being beaten up. Getting dragged somewhere dark. I remember... how you and I met. I'll tell you everything now. I tried to trace your steps, hoping I would find you. But then my investigation hit a dead end and I didn't know what to do, but I kept going. Then I asked myself, why was it you that they tried to kill? For what reason would they do it? And? What do you know about Grey Doctors? No idea. They are doctors who help criminals. Those who are still hiding from the police for their crimes. I met a man who told me about interesting things like these. I eventually found out that one of these gray doctors was you, Dr. Andreev. Do you think I'm one of them? Do you remember this man? Yes. They attacked me when I was in Raisk. And? 
I operated on this man. A nail damaged a part of his brain. I think that's enough for today. I'll stay at a hotel. There must be one somewhere in this town. It's you! Yes. Mm-hmm. Want some? <laughs> Thank you. When I learned the truth about him, I didn't know how to live with it. Who would have thought that the two of us would be sitting here like this, talking and drinking wine? I know. What an exhausting day. Alexei's a good person. I mean, Pavel. I'll never get used to this. I believe facts. Don't obsess over facts. Listen to your heart, too. What does it tell you? What about my heart? I worked with him side by side. He's kind. Do you know how often I hear that from criminals' mothers? Do you know how many lives he saved in this town? It doesn't erase the fact. If he really is a bad man, he'd somehow steer away from cops. Like some sort of instinct to him. You have a point there. I want to say something. People may be spreading rumors about me and Pavel. You probably heard them. And I think it's better that you hear the truth straight from me. I don't really want to know. Nothing's going on between us. I swear. But I wished we had something. I thought I had feelings for him when he came to this town. I guess I wasn't myself then. But earlier, I realized I still have feelings for Dima. I still love him. It's all right. You're in safe hands now, all right? Come, drink this up. Here. Slowly, slowly. Careful, boy. Move slowly. Slowly. You should listen to your heart more. Your brain can only speculate, analyze. But your heart will tell you what you need to do. You will remember when the time comes, but for now, son, just live your life as it is. You despise evil, so be responsible with your actions. Listen not to your past, but to your conscience. Listen to your heart. Look at his huge belly. <laughs> it's 
Excuse me, do you have a minute? I'll be right back. Please tell me there's good news. I'm afraid there's no good news. We did everything that we can for the child. Unfortunately, the radiotherapy did not produce any good results. But you said there's a chance. Yes, but it was always going to be slim. We tried intensity modulation, however, it didn't help at all. I'm so sorry. Once upon a time, there was Hold a hippo. On. What about some other options? With a Is there anything we can do aside pump? from that? We don't have any other options here. But to operate on your child to cure her after radiotherapy, the operation is our last resort, pretty much. The hedgehog asks, are you all right, I'm hippo? going to call Dr. Kazachenko. He knows what to do. And the hippo just fainted. What about? And died. Your promise to try and save her life, you said that, didn't you? Are you saying you cannot keep your promise to her? The hedgehog felt very sad. But then he went out to find new best. friends. I'm sorry. Well, I don't need your apologies, Doctor. <sighs> she always feels sick. They say it's because of the treatment. <sighs> you know she asked me to buy bananas. Bananas and some chocolate pudding. She always loves to put them in bread back home, you know that? At first I said that she can't. But then I thought, just how, how can I refuse her requests? Like how many more times should our daughter suffer? Emma, my darling. Dear. Yes. What is it, dear? dear you're a what? doctor. Can't you do it? Can't you ask them to save her daughter's life? I don't want her to die. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going to do everything I can to save her. All right? I promise you. Please try to calm down. You hear me? We're going to save Nika. So that would mean our doctor's real name is Pavel Andreev. Yes, that is true. It's amazing how you were able to find him. I imagine how difficult that was. If I hadn't seen him on TV, it would have been almost impossible. Yeah, I'd agree to that. This paper certifies that you lost your ID, so you can get on the train. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about Dima? He's gonna go to jail. You still need to follow the law after all. I understand that it's self-defense. But he still killed a man. But we can still make a case for it in court, right? Yeah. Actually, uh, as an experienced lawyer, I would need your help with Dima's case. Of course, I'd be happy to help. All right. You only have five minutes. All right. Dima. Dima. Hey. Tatiana, you're here. I'm glad. Of course I'm here for you. I love you. You love me? I love you. Very much. Things will be all right soon, Dima. We will get through this, you hear me? I'll be fine. What's wrong? You're here. Of course, you idiot. I'm here for you. I'm always here. Was this taken today? Yes. The clinic is full of surgeons, but nobody can operate. Well, I can clearly see that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. I tried calling Vasilchkov, but he is in Moscow. I know. I called the man, too. It seems that professionals of such caliber are very rare these days. It has been the case. <clears throat> Dr. Semyonov, I am pretty sure that you have other students who can do the procedure. Can't you think of someone? Doctor, please, you need to understand. This case is very rare. 
It's an aggressive tumor in a trica location. This kind of removal can only be done by Andreev. I've read reports he did similar operation overseas, and even then, he can't guarantee anything. There is no point in talking about him. He isn't here! We all gather here tonight to honor the memory of this kind man, Vasily. He's such a kind man. May he rest in peace. He raised his good son to be like him. Such a perfect doctor. I've told you many times, he's not Alexei. He's Pavel, his adopted son. Mm -hmm. And Zoya here treated him like he's the worst <laughs> man alive, am I right? <clears throat> Are you really going back to the city? <laughs> yes, I have to. I have no idea what we would do without you here. Can't you stay? You should stop being selfish, Valera. He can't do that. He has a life outside our town. He has done more than enough to help us. Another drink? Nastya, I, I have saved. I'd save some money for you. <clears throat> And to help with Chomka's expenses. Mother, you don't have to, please. It's all Thank right. You. Come on, take it. Just in case you need funds for your medication or the hospital room. <sighs> Thank you so much, Mother. <laughs> well, why don't we have a toast? The Chomka successful operation. <sighs> to our Chomka. <laughs> So he wasn't Alexei? People thought it's him. It seems poetic, doesn't it? How someone atones for the sins of another man. It does seem poetic. If not for Pavel, I would be in a grave next to Vasilis. Well, I hope that you don't hold a grudge. Of course not, our issues were just work-related. You're right. Well, feel free to come by any time. Keep in touch, have some drinks with us, all right? Sure, I'll keep that in mind. Maybe put in a good word for my writings, so I can brag that I'm friends with a neurosurgeon. Of course, I'll do that. <laughs> hmm. Thanks for coming here. Sure, no worries. I'm sorry for your loss. Um, Are you going to come back? I don't know. Just remember, you're always welcome here. Always. Alexei! His name is Pavel. Dima's been released. We came here to thank Marina. I wanted to thank you too. And to apologize for everything that happened between us. Dina, All right, I'll make it go. quick. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, you're a good man. Let's go now. Come on. Okay, thank you. You want some more? Yeah. I'm gonna pour Tomorrow, you. I'm working late hours. Oh, always so dependent. Okay. okay, call me anytime, Emily. Will you help me? You, you still oh. Me. You want some? Yeah, we'll be no, no, no. Wow, this is I'm, really I'm gonna good. Everyone, I want to make an announcement. Mm -hmm. All right, let's drink to this. Tomorrow, Tiomka will undergo surgery for his legs. Tomorrow will also be the day that I leave this town and return to the city. Let's wish Chomka good luck. And I want to express my gratitude for all your help. Without you, this operation would not have been possible at all. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And, and also, 
I also want to thank you. Staying here has really taught me a lot. Having amnesia was really difficult for me, but it's also eye-opening. I was obsessed with finding out about my past. I've also heard a few rumors at one point, but my father told me my past doesn't matter. What really matters is your present. I'll never forget what he said. And I hope you do the same. To Vasily. To Vasily. Cheers. Here's to Vasily. Another glass. Can you pass it to me, please? I would like to have more. All right, we're here. You used to work at this hospital? Uh-huh. Fate must have brought us here. Even if here you don't go. remember, Thank we're you. here for a reason. I'm looking for Chomka Chernikov. Over here. Yep, that's us. <sighs> Dr. <you>. Andreev? <sighs> yeah? <laughs> <sighs> Thank you. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, um, he doesn't remember you. He got into an accident. Amnesia. Oh, you should get to the reception and fill out the papers. Um, meanwhile, we, we will be waiting in the ward. All right, thanks. <laughs> Pavel, please come with me. Good day, Andre. This is the lobby area, and this is the dining Going area. Going somewhere? Uh, Andrei. It's Dr. Andreev. He has amnesia. Oh my goodness. Dr. Andreev? Uh, yeah. Is there any way you can help us? Uh, yes. What is it you need help with? I'm Chomka Chernikov's mother. Ah, uh, Mrs. Chernikov. I was going to contact you. I wasn't expecting them to be with you. Yes, I'm with them. Oh, I'll help you check in then. Will you be in your office, by any chance? I guess so. I guess I'll show them the way then. Uh -huh. Please follow me. All right, we'll just have to prepare some documents and fill out a couple of forms, and after that, we'll just need to... Do you remember the floor? Thanks, Dr. Kazachenko. What is it? Are you okay? It's the fourth floor? Yes, it is.
Welcome back. It's good to see you. Dr. Andreev. Nice seeing you. Pavel! Thank you. Pavel! Good day to you. How have you been? All good. You sound like an idiot. Where have you been? Huh? <laughs> it's a long story. This is Sergei Strelnikov. You went to medical school with him. Well, um... Pavel. I'm so glad to see you're back. Great, isn't it? You really have amnesia? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just... We have a lot of things to catch up on. Yes, of course, absolutely. Yes, of course. Let's see go. you later. Hi, Dad. Nice to see you. This is my father. I'm glad to see you, Pavel. Ladies first. Thank you. Go ahead, son. Today I'd like you to meet Dr. Varlamova. She's going to be asking you questions to examine you. To get an impartial medical opinion. You're a psychiatrist? Just a neurologist. <laughs> and an excellent one. All right. Should we get right to it? I'm ready. <laughs> well, um, did a... Uh... Marina, tell you everything? In broad terms. So it's all true, then. I didn't tell anyone else yet. I wanted to come from you. How bad is your condition? Dr. Semyonov. Dr. Semyonov. <laughs> Dr. Semyonov, yes, I have some I problems see, remembering. Uh... No, tell me. Don't you remember at all? Or did you just forget my name? No, I don't remember you. Only blurred images without faces and details. And the events after the injury? I remember them all. <laughs> well, actually, Pavel was able to treat people in the village quite successfully. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I need to go. I have work to do. Bye. Wait up, Marina. Please, don't go yet. I don't want to bother you. Of course not. You can never bother me. I'm not sure what's going to happen to That's them now. Okay. They were seeing each other. Okay, is there a time... What do you think? I'll say can it's not good. Can we talk about this tonight? How about some other time? Dad, I'll see you later. Okay, let's not jump to conclusions. <clears throat> Pavel. Give her some time. This also isn't easy for her. Right now you need to think about getting back on your feet soon. Oh, sir, I'm healthy and ready to get to work. So be it if I don't remember thanks for my personal life. Marina! You found Pavel. But why didn't you tell me? It was a shot in the dark, but you found him. Yes, I did. Because I knew I would find him. But why didn't you tell me? I called you four times, you didn't call me back. I saw that and sorry for not calling. I know I should have, but I had a lot of things going on. I need to go now if you'll excuse me. can it wait for a few seconds? Come on, Marina. What happened to him? All right then. My opinion is that it's partial amnesia. Mm. Yes, his professional skills are intact. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that his situation is exactly critical. <laughs> well, I'll leave it up to you. I'm ready for all the tests. <laughs> Should I touch my nose? Do you want to? Well, why not? I'm dead serious about this. So am I. <laughs> I can do it. All right, close your eyes. What? Pavel is back? What do you mean? Are he joking about this? He's here, in the hospital. Where? Now I'm going to ask you to memorize and repeat a couple of words after me. Apple, storm, bicycle, coin, orange. Apple, storm, bicycle, coin, orange. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Is that it? Can I go in and do the surgery? <laughs> <laughs> I have a 2 p.m. MRI scan. You can take them if you want. 
And you can come see me at my office. Thank you. Doctor of Arlamov. No problem. I'll see you then. Oh, and one more thing. What was the word that followed a uh, storm? Bicycle? It's nice working with you, Doctor. Good seeing you, sir. Doctor, could you sign these for me, please? Not right now. But I'm afraid it's urgent. I said not right now. What are you, deaf? Is Pavel there? Yes, he and Nikolai are in there talking. I want to speak to him. Let them talk first. You'll get your chance. You think that my daughter's life can wait? I get that. You are not allowed to speak to Pavel unless I tell you to do so. I'll call you. My daughter is dying, and you're standing by that door like some guard dog. I hope you understand that I had to invite a neurologist in order to evaluate your condition. I can reassure you my procedural memory is in Dr. Varlamova is a top-notch neurologist and my friend. She will make sure that you are going to make a full recovery. Please, Sounds sit. good. Oh, hey, 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 are you okay? Hey, are you sick? Oh, huh? Nikolai! Oh. I didn't really want you to see that happening. So the seizure didn't stop after the surgery? Well, it did help. It's just the residual effects. Well, um, Marina oh. told me that I was uh, supposed to deliver your surgery. Don't worry, Sergei did it. Oh, I see. If you don't mind, I would like to see your MRI scans and um, the final results. Is that okay with you? Pavel, I have full trust in you. I have trusted you before, and that never changed. I know you're still the same brilliant surgeon, but we need to take care of you. We need to fix your brain first, and then fix mine. That's why you must go now and take that MRI. Go on, I'm not going anywhere. Go. Very well, then. So that's why he's acting... weird. So they really wanted to kill him? He was left for dead. Then somehow they found out he survived and came back to finish him. But how? I don't know. When it happened, I saw it with my own eyes. It was Bones' accomplice, died in police custody. He died? So was he... was he interrogated? No. At that moment, Pavel recognized me. Did he remember anyone else? He remembers his surgery on bones. But I don't know how. Look. I know what I know what easy. you're going to say, okay? He's your best friend, but it doesn't change anything. So, uh... Pavel is a great doctor. And I don't know how he can live with that. I'm scared, Dad. Why? That you'll stop loving me because I'm very sick. <laughs> what are you talking no about, way, my, my darling? darling? What That's are you never talking going about, happen, huh? No. Sweet Nika. My dearest darling, how can you even say something like that? Don't you ever say that, okay? You're our favorite girl, <laughs> all right? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And to you. You as well. Feel at home? Thank you. Darling, we love you so uh, much. In 30 minutes, Chomka will be taken for an exam. In the meantime, you can head you to, sweet, to room 210 so that the nurse can give you some sheets, all right? All right, sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Chomka? I understand that. Rock and roll. You got this. We love you so much, got this. all right? Take this. Thank you. Who is our beloved daughter? You are. Mm. <laughs> Nika, sweetie, is it okay if mommy has to go? See? She's a big girl. Cheer up, darling. Bye, Mom. I love you very much.
Can you wait for me, please? <laughs> Nika, I'll just take Mom outside, okay? Uh -huh. I'll be right back. We love you so much. Do you want anything? Uh-uh. Ching. <sighs> Chomka, I'll be right back. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. Hi there. Hi there. What's your name? Dionka. My name's Nika. What are you doing here? Do your legs hurt? No, my spine. Spinal cord? Yes. They'll make you better. And you? No, think I'll die. Hey, don't say that. Of course you'll get better. My head hurts all the time. My mom keeps crying. She feels sorry for me. While my dad just wrinkles his nose and sighs. Your parents are worried about you. Just like mine are. <sighs> Do they fight a lot? Sometimes. My parents shout at each other. Now they're all hugs and kisses. I think it's because I'm sick. At least I'm doing them a favor. Hey, listen. I know a surgeon here. He brought me in. Once, he was able to save a little girl. She was in the water. She drowned, but he pulled her out of it and started resuscitating her. She was dead for 10 minutes. I'm pretty sure he can help you. No, he's going to help you. It's over for me. Do you even think dying is painful? Or is it just scary? I don't know. I guess I have nothing to be afraid of. At least my head won't be hurting anymore. Just that. My mom will be disappointed. And my dad, of course. You're not going to die. Not with a name like that. Why is that? Your name, Nika, it means victory. It's a goddess's name and she has wings. That's cool. Please don't worry. I'm sure he'll fix your head and my legs and we'll be fine. Do you think your doctor will help us? Yes, he will. I'm sure of it. Let's look at your results. But I won't show you. Let's pretend I'm your doctor. It's like in an asylum. Whoever gets to wear the gown first is the doctor. Do you remember where you first heard that joke? Uh, <laughs> No. Unfortunately, no. Oh, I see. Too early to tell anyway. Well, according to your MRI examination, no severe damages. You will likely regain your memory. A part of it already has due to stress you're dealing with. Well, yeah. When my father died... Well, I mean that... Do you mean the person who you thought was your father? Right now, you're experiencing a lot of false memories. Your father in the village, the life you used to live. All those false memories can be replaced by the real ones. But... You know who you are now. The process will go smoothly. How fast will my recovery be? Would you know? Well, I don't know. Nobody can really answer that question right now. Your memory is unstable and you're not ready to operate. You know what I mean. Hold on, doctor. Um... You're not giving me clearance to operate? Of course I'm not giving you clearance. You have amnesia. No, I have partial amnesia, but it doesn't affect me as a surgeon. Until you're standing at the operating table. But that doesn't make any sense. You can ask people in the village. I operated with my own hands. In the village, yes, but the risks and responsibilities here are different. Are you just going to expect me to go back to farming? You must understand that your brain can fail you at any moment. I just cannot allow you to operate, at least for now. Understood. My advice? I suggest you keep trying. Go to familiar places, talk to your friends. Your memories connect images to one another, just like catching them on a fishing net. Association sounds. A vicious cycle, seems like. Pavel. Why don't you clean yourself up? Shave, change your clothes, understand? All right. 
And do you still remember where you live? No. I'm just going to take a shower and go straight back to Nika's ward. Why don't you get a good night's rest? Come back tomorrow, I'll stay with her. How does that sound? Okay, honey? No, I'll stay here. No, no, honey, you need to go home. I just don't want to leave her. I just can't stop thinking the moment I leave her here is when something bad is going to happen to her. Emma, please don't say that. We have to keep some faith. Do you understand me? Okay, please stop or I'll start feeling worse. Nika is going to make it. We need to keep our hopes up and be strong, understand? We cannot lose faith right now. Mikhail, has Pavel gotten clearance yet? Can you operate on Nika? Do you remember what we talked about? Yes, I do. Pavel, you're Pavel Andreev. Please wait. I need to talk to you, please. Uh, yes? How can I help? Uh, you probably don't remember me, but I'm August's friend. You operated on her. Sorry, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. My daughter has a tumor. Nobody wants to do her surgery. Oh, I see. I'm sorry to hear. I just got back, and... And it's great that you're back because you're the only one who can help us. Please, doctor, if I could just show you the MRI as scans, I'll go get my husband. As much as I want to, I can't do it. What? I don't have clearance. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't help you. What do you mean? You said you were back. Yes, I'm back. I'm suffering from a neurological disorder. I have amnesia. And I don't have a permission. That's why. I'm sorry. You really can't. If only I could. But we... we thought you were going to help us. We hope you could. You're here! Yeah, sorry it took so long. Hello. Hello. This is Nika. She's good at drawing. Mm-hmm. Is that you? Yes, that's me. I'm Captain and she's the Goddess. Her name's Nika. <laughs> Pretty clever. So when is the operation going to be? Tomorrow? What about me? I have a tumor in my brain, and they say you're the only surgeon who can help me. You're going to take it out, right? I promise I'll be patient for a while, but not for very long. So when is it? Don't you worry, the doctors here are great. And so is the hospital. You'll be okay. And that means you're not going to operate on us, right? I thought we had a deal. For now, I'm on the sidelines. My dad waited. So did I. He told me you're the only one who can help me. They won't let me. It will be all right. It's going to be all right. Excuse me. If there is a will, there is a way. You said so yourself. Did you already forget that? And now you're just running away, right? I knew that's gonna happen. I told you. They always promise I'm going to get better. They say everything is going to turn out fine. But it's never going to. Never. Dr. Varlamova, where is Pavel? I need to know where he is. I'm not allowing him to operate. What do you mean that you won't allow him? He doesn't remember anything. He has a serious head injury. But he started working at the hospital after the injury. In that village, he's doing surgeries. Every single nurse here talks about it. And you're telling me he doesn't remember anything? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Then swear to me that you're telling the truth. I swear. As a neurologist, there's an objective evidence to this. 
Well, then I'm forbidding you from dismissing him of his duties. You have to delete all of the records. Do you understand me? Dr. Varlamova. Do you understand what I just said? I understand. How long will the operation last? Six hours? Dr. Kasachenko, will you take full responsibility for Andreev for every single minute during these six hours? Will you take full responsibility whatever happens to your daughter in his hands? Will you take that risk? I'll take that responsibility. Now, if you could kindly tell me if he remembers that he's a doctor. I don't deny that. Dr. Semyonov! What is this, your revenge? I need to call you back. Dr. Kosashenko? Is this what you're trying to do? You're conspiring with Irina! You're trying to get revenge on me through my daughter! Dr. Kosashenko. What do you want from me? If you want me to quit my job, then just say so! Or do you want me to apologize to you? Is that what you want, huh? Huh, Dr. Semyonov? This has nothing to do with you and me. Pavel cannot do operations due to his condition. Dr. Varlamova examined him. We can't trust him to operate on the human brain just yet. And there's nothing I can do about it. It is so easy for you to say that. Dr. Kosachenko. No, 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 you listen to me. Pavel is the only person who can save her. He is the only one who can save my daughter. I'm telling you, he's the only one. There's nobody capable other than him. I insist Pavel must perform the surgery. Do you really insist? I do. Very well. You're in charge now. You can give orders to Dr. Varlamova. You don't have to ask me at all. But are you ready to take such a great risk? Are you? Are you trying to bribe me? When will you stop, huh? <laughs> you already found him. What else do you want? I want to know why they wanted to kill him. Let me explain it to you. Your beloved is a great doctor, and he's in deep trouble. You're lucky we've got nothing on him, for now. Supposed to say that you're right and luck is on my side. Either way, I have a lot to figure out. What happened, etc. Would you believe him if you were me? Marina. As an investigator, no. Really. I'm sorry. Okay. Wow. Is this really all for me? When I was looking for you, I had no lead but to follow breadcrumbs. 
And when the investigation hit a dead end, I didn't know what to do next. But as you know, I just couldn't sit there and wait. I had to think for a moment and ask, why you? What was it that they wanted from you? What do you know about Grey Doctors? They're doctors that cater to criminals. I came to a rude awakening that the person who helps murderers, sinners, happens to be you. Yes, hello? Uh-huh. Okay, I'll be right down. Hey, Maxim. Hello, Dr. Andreev. Do you think you could help me out? How can I help? Yeah, I need to see Nikolai's MRI. Yeah, of course. And, um... Uh, um, before, before and, after. and after. Here you go. Take your time. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. What's going on here? Oh, wow. Hi there. Looks like you shaved. You look great, man. Thanks. How's it going, Pavel? I'm fine. Looking at Nikolai's MRI. Yeah? Mm hmm And what do you think? Well... It's a bit complex. I agree. A difficult one. But I can tell you more... about it. When can we meet? Soon. Soon, but right now, um... Did we perform the operation together? Uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh-huh. I just don't understand. Oh, excuse me. to attend the council, but in this case, we can make an exception. Take this stand, Dr. Andreev. This case has a different level of complexity. Well, the patient, 27 years old female, has a large cerebral aneurysm. to believe in yourself so much so that the universe has no choice but to deliver. Pavel, you saw I almost removed it. Get some rest. May I proceed? Go ahead, Dr. Andreev. It's not working again. 
Hello, Dr. Gazachenko. Mikhail... Uh, what do you want, Pavel? I need to talk to you. How can I help you? I understand by doing this, I'm violating orders. However, allow me to operate. I understand. Dr. Varlamova prohibited me, but I know what I can do. I know I can operate. Just because I forgot my first teacher's name doesn't mean I can't remember the alphabet. People put faith in me. Oh, here's your coffee. Sorry. Faith, you say? I understand it more than anyone. Well, you can always make the call. Dr. Varlamova is against it. She asked me if I was ready to trust you with my daughter. My daughter is lying there and she needs surgery. Yes, I do understand that there's a gap between a village hospital and neurosurgery. What exactly do you want from me? I want you to give me a test. How do I know what I'm capable of if I don't do anything? What's the use of just waiting? Dr. Strelnikov is scheduled to do an operation tomorrow. Spinal surgery. Yes, Tionka Chernikov. Is this the boy you brought in here? Yes. Are you ready to perform his surgery? Yes. How will I do to this operation? Um, Varlamova? She and I will talk. Thank you. Doctor, how's it going? Hey there. So you've heard. This is great news. It is. Whatever the hell. I hope you know what you are doing. Dr. Andrea, it has been arranged. You are operating on Chomka Chernikov tomorrow at 2 p.m. Okay, I'm ready. Very well then. Dr. Semyonov. Pavel, isn't it too soon? Clearly, I'm not in the position to tell you anything now. You already look at my MRI scans. Dr. Semyonov. Here's your tea. Mm hmm. Your mother does that too. Because mom knew the tastiest way to eat it. Mm hmm. And you make the tastiest pancakes in the world. <laughs> hey, Dad? Hmm? Let's go to the beach, hmm? It'll be good for you. After your operation, you'll get better fast. Where to? Wherever you like. The Dominican Republic, for example. <sighs> Why not go to Hawaii? Hmm. Then let's go to Hawaii. Hmm. Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> Is it because of work? You see, Marina, there comes a time in life when you have no idea that everything is about to change forever. Have you thought about that? That's so profound. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you this, but I figured I need to. You know, my surgery wasn't actually as successful as I mentioned. 
Darn. I forgot to take a bite for myself. What do you mean it wasn't? Dad, what happened? Marina. You, you are a very smart and independent woman. That's how your mother and I intended to raise you. Dad, what's your point? The tumor wasn't removed completely so as not to damage important cognitive areas. It's just impossible to remove it fully. But we can fix that, right? You can have another surgery, you have connections abroad, they have better specialists there who can help. Unfortunately, we need to find out. it won't help. What won't help? You decided this on your own, Dad. Well, I just know it. You knew all this time? You lied to me? Dad, you didn't I, want to have this conversation. I didn't it's been want a month and a half since the surgery, and you've been silent this whole time? Do you realize that everything could I have been I didn't want fixed? to make the last days with you unhappy. Days? Dad. How? How much time do you have? Well, just a few more weeks. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. What happened? I explained the situation to Marina. Uh huh. But she did not listen. Perhaps you could talk to her. Please, my son. Uh, of course. <sighs> yes, the last one. I was told that your hospital is fantastic with a good... My father is a renowned surgeon. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. They refused. They're just cowards. Just cowards. It's just a bad day. A very bad day. We just need to accept it, Marina. What? Accept it? Why are you here? To comfort me? To calm me down or what? I don't need your help. I'm not panicking or slitting my wrists. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forget about Raisk. Or even Yagodnoye. Forget about the past. I see you now and I'm begging you with all my heart to please just save him. I'm begging you, please. Marina, I need you to listen. You have to listen carefully. There's nothing more I can do. No. Not anymore. No, it's no, too no, late. no, no, no. This. God, this can't be happening. You, I'm sorry, I can't. You're just do afraid it. of doing it. You're just afraid of doing it. But this is my father. I'm begging you, please. What are the chances that the surgery is not going to succeed? 15%, 10%, 5%, it may not matter to you, but that's more than enough hope for me. Marina, there is no such thing as failure rate in surgery. I am not afraid. It's just that we're too late and there's nothing else I can do. You need to understand that. No, you are too late. Go away. Leave now! This is all your fault. This is all your fault. You could have done his surgery and he would have recovered, but you left for that goddamn rice and you never came back. Why was I even looking for you? I don't know why. You just don't remember anything. But it's your fault why you have a criminal record. If you hadn't involved in any of this, everything would have been fine and no one would have beaten you up. This is all your fault. This is all your fault. You hear me? It's all your fault, my father is dying! <laughs> it's
It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just go away. Just go away. How was it? Is she okay? Yes, I explained it to her. Thank you. I have surgery to do. Good luck to you, son. No. Thank you. All right, we'll handle this. Okay. Hello. Could you take this to room 03? All right, thank you. Oh, Pavel, you're here. Oh, Sergey. You all right? Yeah, sorry for being late. Don't worry about it. So you changed your mind? Where would I be without you? Hello, doctor. Tyomka. Hello, Nastya. Doctor. Uh, Sergey. This is Tyomka and Nastya. Sergey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, my Hello, friend and nice colleague. We'll be working together. Yeah. Okay, it's time to go. Right, let's go. All right, here Wait, we go. Just yeah. one sec. We'll go first. How long is it going to be? I don't know. It really depends. I'm hoping not too long. Please don't worry too much. Sure, I'll try. It'll be all right. Uh -huh. Okay? You can wait here. Okay. You know when I saw Tionka's MRI scans and read the commentary, I thought, what kind of miracle doctor is in that village? How is that possible? And it turns out, it was you. Yeah, my hands know what you're doing. Listen, it doesn't really matter. You remember some, and there are things that you don't. Well, yeah. Procedural memory is intact. Unlike my personal ones. So do you remember who hit you? I remember some criminal. Why'd he do it? No idea. But he was my patient. I did his surgery. Do you remember the operation? I don't remember the operation. But I remember taking him down some corridor. It was at night, or there were some lights uh, flashing. There was... Oh. Hey, what's going on? Are you okay? Come on, talk to me, Pavel. What's going on? Are you all right? Yeah. Hold on. And you were there, too. Where? The operation. Well, yeah, because you asked me to. Uh, you said that the surgery was complicated. I said yes, so I assisted you. Yeah, you assisted me. Yeah, we were working together. That's right. Uh, maybe I was really working for them. Pavel, listen. Are you sure you're okay? Should I call for Maxim instead? No, I'm fine. It's okay. Besides, Dr. Varlamova said I should do something that's familiar to me. One memory unlocks another. It's all right. Come on. Condition? BP and pulse are normal. The patient's ready. Listen, everyone. We'll start with posterior spinal fusion, decompression laminectomy, in the area of the lumbar vertebrae L2-L4. Well, the most important thing is that you do your job well. As for us, we'll take care of the rest. Scalpel, please.
Harrison, please. Pavel. About Bones and the operation we did together. Sergey, I have no memory of that. To save a man's life, it's a huge responsibility, and the money we made off that. Take the kerosene and give me the forceps. What do you mean? Did I take the money? Well, actually, I don't know. I didn't see it. <laughs> <clears throat> We're done with decompression. Removing the disc. I'm not giving you clearance. But the risks and responsibilities here. You must understand that your brain can fail you at any moment. I don't understand. Pavel, what's going on? I don't understand. What, what do I do next? You remember something? What? Take this. I knew it. I told him this was going to happen. Pavel. Dr. Andriev, are you okay? What's going on with you? How could this be? What's going on with you? What happened to him? We need to continue. Forceps, please. What's the condition? BP and pulse are normal. Excellent. Dr. Vailamova, is Dr. Andreev operating today? He just finished. By the way, where's Andreev? He left. He's been out for a while. Is there a problem? No, no, it's all right. What would happen? I heard Andreev's off the operation. Sergey, how can I help you? Well, first of all, you don't answer my calls. I had to come here in person. I didn't allow you to sit down. I don't care about that. <laughs> Do you know what's going on? Do you know that Andreev is back here with us? He's back at the hospital. There are some things that he remembers, some he doesn't. Listen! Did you know that Lanky was killed in Yagodnoi? He was shot. <sighs> May his soul rest in peace. 
What makes you so worried, then? Where's the recording? <laughs> really? So you're demanding something from me now, huh? <laughs> Remember, I know you're in deep trouble. You better stop yapping and talking nonsense. Who do you think you are to act like that in front of me? You think you're a bigwig or something? Listen to me, you're just nothing, okay? Your words don't matter. Why are you talking to me like this? Shut up, you stupid freak! You must listen when I speak, got me? Goodness, what an imbecile. <sighs> Don't get me wrong here. I understand you. Of course I do, Sergei. You had a happy life. And then suddenly, Andreev is back. And I know you were already thinking that everyone thinks you are the best, the winner. You made it. And Andreev is gone, because you thought he died in a ditch. But no. No. Anything could happen. God didn't give you the talent, Sergei. Don't worry, it happens. I know that when Andreev isn't around, it's so much easier, right? It's not like that. Oh, it is? Remember, he was the one who saved Bones, not you. No, we did it together. Hmm? I talked to him back then. I offered him to run a hospital by himself, but only if he cooperates with me. Do you know what he said to me? What do you think? He said that I should get lost. How could he brag at me when he could eat nothing more than noodles in a freaking dorm? And you? Sergei, you are such a sissy. I bought you. I know Andreev has always been a bone that's stuck in your throat. And he has always considered you a friend, Sergei. A friend. He always helped you in everything, never left you in trouble, right? You better shut up. Oh, you want me to shut up? <laughs> oh, you see, I'm celebrating right now. My lips are sealed, Sergei. <laughs> oh. Sergei. Oh, my. Do you know the circles of hell? Well, the ninth circles actually is for those who broke faith with their benefactors. <laughs> so, Sergei, does it ring the bell? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Moose. Actually, yeah. I know why you reminded me of the circles of hell. Oh, yeah. Pin all the scrap on me, don't you? That's your plan, isn't it? I'm just a doctor, and I work in a hospital. You put the mark on him. You. You. You ask for this. You know I didn't. <laughs> you did it, Sergei. On your own. Where's the recording? Screw you, loser. <clears throat> Where you been? Tell me everything. There's nothing to tell, just problems. Is it about a hospital? No. Anna.
I killed someone. I'm afraid to go to jail. Tell me who was it. Go on. It was Moose. The crime boss who forced me to work for them. Okay. Sergey, tell me the truth. What time did you go there? 1 a.m. I don't remember now. <clears throat> 1 a.m. or so, huh? Okay, then. You came home at 11 from the hospital. We had our dinner here at home, and to be exact, we both ate some... potatoes, and we had some tea. Then we went to bed early because we have to get up early in the morning to go to my ultrasound. We had to be there at 7.30 a.m. We didn't want to be late. Do you know about Grey Doctors? These are doctors who secretly help criminals. We finally found out that one of the doctors who help these criminals and murderers is actually you. Sergei already confirmed it. But wait, you were at the operation. You were assisting. Well, yeah, because he asked me to. You saved the man's life. Being a doctor implies a lot of responsibility in her salary. The security says that he wasn't there when it happened. Nobody heard or saw anything, so it looks like it was a ghost or something. So are you done? Yeah. Criminologist has confirmed that he certainly died as a result of falling from a height. And a fracture at the base of the skull. What do you think? I think he had a very luxurious life. But who knew that he would suddenly slip and fall? Foolish way to go, gotta say. Well, I'm asking you what do you think about the expert's conclusion, smartass. Foolish death. How can you make it smart? Well, whatever. Hi, Alexei. Hello, Marina. Gubarev, remember him? Yes, I remember him. He's a philanthropist. He was connected to Bones. Why are you suddenly asking me about him? Because he's dead. Oh. But do you know how it happened? Well, it looks like he was too drunk last night and he fell from the stairs in his own house. <clears throat> what time did it happen? Around 1 or 2 a.m. Oh, I see. All right, anyway, please call me when you know something. At your service, ma'am. Don't worry about it. Over there. Hey! Mm. There's a lot of dried blood in here. Wanna take a look to confirm? There's a lot of blood, but it's not from yesterday. Probably from a month ago. Let me drive. Sergey. Have you told me everything? 
Anna, I already told you I killed someone. You think I haven't told you everything? So tell me, can I fully trust you then? Yes. Okay, then I trust you. I think we'd better leave. I was offered a place in a hospital in Moscow. You can continue your career there. All right, so when? As soon as Semyonov arrives, yes. tell me immediately. Don't wait for ten minutes. You have to got tell it, me immediately. It, it. Darling, what happened? Go, go, What's guys. Hurry on? up and get started. Don't waste any time. Relax, dear. We're getting some tests done. Calm down now. We can't follow her in that room. Stay here. Is she okay? She's okay. We'll examine her. We're hoping for good results. I have to go now. Just wait there, okay? Try to calm down. Okay. right now is very critical. I'm afraid that the girl may soon. I see that, Maxim. Easy, darling. Let's go now. Yes, this is indeed very bad. If you're going to suppress what is happening now, it's going to increase the pressure in her body and a fatal outcome would arise. But then again, if you do nothing in this case, it will be fatal too. Okay, give me your hand. He'll be fine, my dear. The operation must be held strictly today. This is the only chance we have. Take her to the ward. I'm coming as well. We have to do it now. Find Strolnikov. Yeah, girl, let's go now. Listen. We may hold a council for this. But I strongly believe that for now it's safe to say that the operation must be held today. And to do that, we need your permission as her parents. I understand. I'm going to talk to my wife. Can you zoom that in? Well, it looks perfect right now. Uh -huh. There's nothing to worry about. Well... Do you want to hear the heartbeat of your baby? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. Answer that call for us. We'll wait. It's Aminov's daughter. Yes, hello? Sergey, hey. Have you seen Pavel today? I can't reach him by phone. No. No, I haven't. I need to ask you. Have you heard the name Gubarev by any chance? I don't know. Gubarev or Gubaryov? Hello? Hello? Hello, Sergey, I can't hear you. Okay, call me back when you can speak.
She's just looking for Andreev. So let's listen. Uh huh. Sergey. Sorry. I'm kind of overwhelmed by it. Excuse me, I'll go out first. Whew. It's all right. Men are always stressed during the ultrasound. Look, Anna, I'm very happy for you. And you'll have a good husband. <laughs> Hi, darling. Hi. How are you? Mm -hmm. Let's go. What did the MRI show? Mikhail? Honey? Why are you being quiet? You must tell me what happened. Please tell me what the test results were. Keep your voice down. She needs to rest. She needs to be strong. Listen. Why is this happening so quickly? The tumor is growing like a house on fire. Do you understand that this is our daughter and she's dying right before our eyes? And we're standing here like it is doing we're nothing. We're doing something, Emma. Please calm down. I need to talk to Dr. Semyonov. And uh, I believe that there's no point in waiting. We have to do the operation now. Andreev got the permission. He can operate now. No, he failed at yesterday's operation on the boy. We're not counting on him anymore. Emma. But dear. Semyonov will be a consultant at the operation. It's going to be all right. But do you realize that? In this hospital, nobody but Dr. Andreev can actually do such a complicated operation as that one? I'll call my father. <sighs> okay, give me your hand, dear. Daddy, please, I'm begging you right now. Please do something. They don't tell me. They don't tell me anything. They can't do anything about her. Okay, I get it. But please hurry up. I will be waiting here. Hello. Hello. You need to sign some papers. <laughs> Emma? Hi there. <laughs> you know I cannot. 
I cannot, I don't want to, to live without her. But why her? She's just a little girl, you know. She's being prepared for the operation. Well, that's good. Endless test. And all these needles. I just can't, I can't stand seeing that all her, all her hands are covered with pricks, her small and weak It's how it should be. They did a cardiogram yesterday. My granddaughter is waiting for the operation, and you know, every minute counts now. In Germany, the plane will be accommodated. Give me the green light for the flight and we won't have any problem. <laughs> Hang in there, you'll be all right. You know me, okay? Daddy! Come, come, come. Don't worry. I'll arrange everything. It will be okay. Nika will be safe. And it will be all right. Let's go now. Security desk? Yes? Dr. Savalkina, it's for you. Huh? You're expected at the council. Thanks, Andre. Yes. No. I already told you we didn't order an ambulance for children because we don't need it. You've got some nerve to do such thing. I see. They cancel the ambulance right away. Emma Colden said that every minute counts for her daughter's life. And what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Listen, we must urgently transport Nika to a German hospital. I've already called there and they're ready to admit her. They have qualified professionals there who can check her condition and do all the necessary, uh, everything they must do. Listen, sir, I'm sorry, but could you please shut up at least this once and listen to what I have to say? I know for a fact that you love Nika as much as I love her. And I know that you don't think of me much as a doctor. Look, I don't give a damn. If you want to be sure, we can go to the council. Where doctors will explain to you Nika's current condition. And if it's possible, to just transport her anywhere you want to receive other treatment. Or you can stay here and yell all day! I need to go to the council now. Mikhail, hold on. Mikhail, wait for me. Calm down, please. Let's go to the council together. Sergey, we must go to the council. I was calling you. What's going on? Listen, <clears throat> they're looking for me. <sighs> We'd better leave right now. But she can't leave now. <sighs> Nika is, is just a child. She's so small. She only has a little chance to live. But if we don't do anything for her right at this moment, I'm sure we'll regret it forever. You must stay and help her the best that you can. You're right. You're right. We'll leave after the operation. I love you, okay? Come here. So, my dear colleagues, we have the results of today's MRI. It's a critical moment for us, Dr. Kasachenko. We all must use all the potential of our skills and knowledge, and it's also critically important to choose the exact strategy for the upcoming operation. You see, they're dragging their feet already. Make the decision now, and immediately, we'll take Nika to Germany. Don't pay attention to them, Dr. Semyonov. Let's listen to them first, and then decide on our plan. The latest scan from the MRI reveals an explosive growth of two more cells in the patient's brain. So today, all the experts are here and we have to talk about it. The total resection of the tumor inside. And that's because it's critical now and it's growing so rapidly, it's impossible to establish through the MRI. And we have to do some drastic measures. It means that some part of strategic decisions as an expert are advised to be taken only after the craniotomy. 
during the operation. Please, that's enough. Enough! I've heard enough to understand that you can do nothing with the situation. I won't be sitting here and waiting. I've already made arrangements before coming here. Right now, the CCT ambulance is waiting. We must take Nika to the airport as soon as possible. We only have three hours. Emma, please, you must prepare Nika for the trip. We must act on this quickly. I can't take this anymore. You know what, Mr. Aldanov? You need to be more respectful. All these people have come to help us so we can solve this on our own. Your connections, money, power don't mean anything to help her condition at this moment. Your granddaughter has a ticking bomb in her head. One wrong move during the transportation or operation can provoke the fatal outcome and we'll be left regretting it. Do you really understand how serious this is? Mr. Aldanov, right now you must forget the idea of transporting Nika. Otherwise, this will be her last flight. Surely you don't want it. You don't have any other options right now. You have no choice. Well, okay. If not Andreev, who will operate on her? Him? I believe he has never done such operations. Right. Stronikov has never done it, but I already have. I will be with him during the operation and give him instructions. I suggest he'd better stay with Emma. I believe she's suffering. Mikhail, let's prepare now. Yes. This upcoming operation will be done by Dr. Sergei Strelnikov. I'll be assisting all the way. The second assistant is Bondarenko. After some time, Markov will replace him. We finally found out that one of the doctors who helped these criminals and murderers is actually you. It's actually you. You. Oh, Dr. Varlamova, I badly need your help. You already know what happened. Please help me. Before that, I want to ask you something first. I've been thinking about it. It's personal. Does it occur to you that your amnesia may be provoked by reasons other than physical damage? That it can be the reaction of your subconsciousness to certain events from your past, which you actually want to forget and don't want to talk about anymore? Frankness for frankness, why shall I justify myself? I don't know what I did Take wrong. Take a seat, please. I don't know why I was attacked, why that man returned after to deal with me. I must remember everything in order to figure it out. Well, if I'm really to blame for something, then okay, I'll face it. I'm going to deal with it. How do you like hypnosis? It's a good question. Let's start. Don't worry, I'm here with you. I want you to concentrate on your breath. It's normal and even. In and out. In and out. Now you are totally relaxed. And then your eyes are getting heavy. And they're closing now. You're in the dark, but you can see something in front of you. Tell me what you see there. Water. A river bank. What is the river? Are there canes? Is the current slow or is it moving fast? 
Yes, the water is warm. There's no wind. And what do you hear? Some boys are shouting. They're asking me to jump. Do you see yourself? Yes, I... I'm on the rope swing. It's so high. But I'm not scared of it. What are they shouting? Alexei. Alexei, good job. Are you Alexei? <laughs> I'm Alexei. What's your surname? Kolesnikov. I'm Alexei Kolesnikov. And where do you live? With my father on the outskirts. This is so cool. I'm, so cool. <laughs> I'm going to jump again. Hold on. Look at yourself right now. Do you look alike? Yes, yes, that's me, Alexei. I'm Alexei Kolesnikov. Take a closer look again. You are Pavel Andreev, and you live in St. Petersburg. No, I'm Alexei. I'm Alexei. No, no. This is another boy. I'm Kolesnikov. I'm Alexei Kolesnikov. Hey, calm down. Calm down now. It's a dark place. But now you're seeing something again. So tell me, what do you see now? It's the river again. The forest. Dad is coming. Is he alone now? No, we're Glasha. Dad? Hey, Dad. Open your eyes. Dad, do you hear me? Dad, it's Alexei. Dad! I'm Alexei! Pavel, open your eyes. Father! Pavel! Where are you? I'm here in the hospital. I think I'm okay. I'm Pavel Andreev. These are childhood memories, but it's not you. It's a boy from Yagodnoye. What you experienced is called the replacement of memories. Yes, I don't remember the events, but I know the interpretation. That's just it. Well, it's okay. I think sooner or later, you'll start distinguishing between real and false memories. I think I can do it now. The thing is, I, Pavel Andreev, I'm afraid of water. Mmm. Now that's interesting. Yes, fear of death. This phobia isn't very common, but it exists. And in this case, I suppose we can use it. Hey, come on. Will you just give me a minute to talk to my daughter, all right? Just wait in the corridor, please. Sorry, sir. Dad, give me your hand. <sighs> Tell me, Daddy, do you know Nika, the ancient Greek goddess? Her statue was put in ships to avoid storms that would come. Chamka told me that story. Of course I know that story. It was me who chose your name. Yeah, I suppose you know that. Dad, for me, you and Mom are the best parents that any kid could ever have. You're the kindest, and all this time, I don't know why I was embarrassed to say it. Darling, I'm here. Your mom is also here. We're here with you. Hmm? See? You'll just fall asleep, and when you wake up and open your eyes, we'll be sitting right here, beside your bed. Dad, don't worry too much about me, okay? I'm ready. <laughs> I promise you that I won't worry too much. Take my word. And don't be scared, all right? Dr. Kazachenko. Nika. It's time. Let's begin. Thank you.
All right, don't be scared, Nika. You're standing by a river. The current is rapid. The bottom is sandy. Now get into the water slowly. The water is so cold. Yes. But this is you. That's the real one. The Pavel Andreev who is afraid of water. That's exactly why you're here. I'm scared. Very scared. Just continue walking. Don't be scared. Now, as you perceive yourself as Pavel and not someone else, it will be easier for you to remember everything. While doing that, you must find a moment when everything changed, the memories that changed everything in your life. Where are you? I'm in a corridor of a hospital. Which one? I don't know. Did you work here? I really don't know. Just go on. That's him, right? Somebody stopped me. Do you know who stopped you? I cannot turn my head back. What does this person want? I don't understand. Now take another step. Deeper. I hear people talking. Is the conversation important? They are talking about an assassination. I don't understand. What do you see at this moment? A door. A door to medical admission unit. Open the door. Look at the people who are talking there. You have to do it. <gasps> Pavel! Pavel! I'm okay. You must come back. I really wanted to open that door. I wanted to open it. But something is stopping me. The train. Oh, it hurts so much. This train smashes my head. Oh. Oh. It's okay, I'm fine. This is a normal reaction. Thank you. I told you that it may be painful for you. You see, your body clearly reacts to the memories and physical sensations are apparently evident to see. Your brain remembers the events and reconstructs them accordingly. Do you remember which hospital it was? Yes, we were chief residents there, number four. Mm. Think it over. Why does your memory put you exactly in this place? Why not in university? Not in the clinic? Not even at the places where you've studied before? What could be the crucial thing that happened there that changed you so much? I remember the hospital before. When Marina found me, she already told me everything. I remember the hospital and the operation that I performed in that place. You mean on the people behind the door? Yes. Let's try one more time. No. Please, let's try no. again. I'm begging you. But why not? It's because, Pavel, the pain that you experienced when you were doing that earlier is not phantom or memories. It's already the real pain. I really need to open that damn door. I must remember everything. Don't you understand that? You see, I must. I need it. Please, help me remember. I'm begging you.
fine. Listen to me carefully, okay? During this time, you'll hear my voice. I will be near you. I will be holding your hand. You will tell me everything you hear or see while you're in that place. Deal? Yes. You're back on the riverbank again. You get into the water. Deeper. One more step. You must get deeper in the water. Do not be afraid. It's very cold. You're in the hospital. I am with you and holding your hand. Don't be scared. You'll manage to surpass this. I promise I will help you. Where did you see these people? There. There? There, behind the door. You must open this door. If you are ready, you will surely be able to open this door. Try it. No, you aren't ready yet. Take one more step. Do it. More! Go! Push it! Push it! Do it! What? What do you see? Nothing. There's nobody. Pavel! Andreev! I hear the steps. Somebody's calling me. Who is it? Who is it? Look, I need your help right now. What happened? Just tell me if you can help me! It was Sergei. Why is he with you? Hey, what's going on? Can't you see the nail in the head? He's alive. I remember. We operated on that man together. Did you operate on him or Sergei? I don't know. Please help me. You can do it. But please don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Which of you is a great doctor? Come on, we can't do this. Don't say that anymore. You did a great job. You saved the man's life. See? You even made some money. Who's he giving money to? To you or to Sergei? I don't see it. I think I need to go deeper. No, it's too dangerous. But I must. Pavel, don't. Pavel, we're coming back, okay? I'm holding your hand and we're leaving now. What do you see, Pavel? Here, thanks for your help. See you later. Did you really take the money? You better not mess with such people. Come on now, Pavel. If you only knew what you did for me. How come? You help me, I help you. We all have skeletons in the closet. Let's share the money. I'm not greedy anyway. Take it. I'll forget this evening and this conversation. So you hate me, huh? Maybe you're right. But you shouldn't think I'm doing it for the money. It made me do it. It's not like I had a choice. Let's go to the police then. No, don't call the police. They'll just kill me, you know that. Please, Pavel, don't tell anyone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you remember everything? Yes. I remember everything now. I am... Dr. Pavel Andreev. I remember all. When you studied in university, your group actually came to my place once. Where do I live? You live in Griboyedov Street. Dr. Varlamova, no need to examine me. Who are your parents? My parents already died six years ago. The number of my ID, 43, 23, 43, 23, 23. The number of my insurance. Pavel. Nika is in the operating room. Who's operating? Suction. Right, now the sponge. Done.
We've retracted the cerebellar hemisphere. At this moment, we already have access to the tumor. The tumor has grown into the brainstem. We're going to try to remove the main part of the tumor at this point, and then we'll try to separate the remaining part from the bottom of the fourth ventricle. Why is it bleeding? I don't understand. I don't get it. The tumor is huge. It has spread to the neighboring areas. You must separate it or Nika will die. But why is it bleeding? I don't get it. Suction. Easy, easy. Calm down, dear. Don't cry now. Don't look at the screen. Don't look, my dear. It's impossible. Okay, try to start on the right. Dr. Saminab, I'm afraid we can't do anything with this. Just go a bit deeper. If I go deeper, we'll provoke ischemia. You know that. Sergey. No, I can't. I won't go further than this. We'll end up causing more harm than good. You must continue the operation. If you don't remove the tumor completely, the girl will suffer. Look, if I go deeper, this girl will die in front of us. What do you choose? Can you decide? Shall we ask the parents? It's difficult, but it's possible. I did such operations before, and you can do it. No. Come on, you must do it. No, Dr. Semyonov. I know what I can and can't do. Mikhail. Mikhail, what's going on? I'm sure you can do it. Andreev could. And several other doctors. Wait, why did they stop? But I... I'm not imagining anything, it's just the truth. Why did they stop the operation? Make them do something! It's my daughter, Mikhail! I'm sorry, but if I go deeper... Just wait. I will kill this girl. Get out now. Dr. Semyonov, why are you stopping the operation? Come on, what's going on here? This Hector. Zelnikov, <sighs> please continue! I order you to continue the operation! Sergey. You know what? If you choose to stop the operation now, the tumor will surely grow again. It will make her life longer. Should I say sufferings by month or two at most? You see, now is our only chance to save this girl.
<laughs> Dr. Kasachenko, what happened? Oh, it's you. Dr. Kasachenko, what? They decided to stop the operation. Strelnikov refuses to proceed further. I know he's afraid to remove the tumor completely. I don't know what to do anymore. Uh, what's going to happen to my sweet daughter now? And Dr. Semyonov? Dr. Semyonov, he uh, can't do it either. He's losing his vision. Uh, I just want to die now. Can I just die for her instead? So she can live? I'm fine with that. Dr. Gazachenko, calm down. What did Vardomova say? We can proceed. Then we'll proceed. From this point forward, Dr. Andrei will take over the operation. Then I'll excuse myself, Dr. Seminov. Sergei, please stay behind. I'll need your assistance. Dr. Strelnikov, reporting. Anna, before we begin, has the patient reacted to earlier attempts in removing the tumor? She showed no reactions to any attempts. Alright, that's good news then. For now, it doesn't seem to be all that bad. Hand me the dissector, please. Let's start by chipping at the tumor bit by bit, then we'll see how she reacts. How is it? Did Varlamova help you remember? Is a genius surgeon back with us? Yes, she did. I'm back now. Even the things I didn't want to remember. We're almost done. Just a bit more. And here we are. The epidemic is intact, so that's perfect. One to zero in our favor. Excuse me. Dr. Markov, please replace Dr. Strelnikov. Let me repeat the question. We found some blood in Gubarov's house, which happens to be a match with your DNA. Why is that? Marina, have a seat over there, and be quiet. It's in your best interest to cooperate. You know how this goes already. This isn't your first time talking to an investigator. So why don't you just get on with it? Go on. Hmm, all right then. We just had a little fight and, uh... That's how my blood and my fingerprints were all over his place. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. But that was ages ago. More than a month at least. Mm. Then that means you were injured over a month ago. <laughs> I was, uh... Last night I had a toothache. It hurt a lot more. And a bullet. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt as much as my tooth did. So what really happened was... He got shot that night, right? 
So, tell me who really shot you, when, and for what reason. Like I already told you, we often get together with the guys to play poker and, you know, other stuff that comes with hanging out. You know how these things go, some idiot will lose their nerve or get mm. pissed because of a bad hand. So do any of these friends of yours have names? Spill it. Dmitry Shemashko and uh, Andrei Gubarev. Come on, come on, come on! All right, then, so, uh, we were playing with Dmitry and, uh, I uh, won all the money he put up, so he thought that now it's cheating. Since we always drink together when we're playing poker, it was a whiskey or some other thing. I'm not really sure. All right, then. So when Samashko shot at you and ended up wounding you, did you go to a hospital to get your wound treated? Uh-huh. I ain't no dummy. Moose has a doctor in his pocket that comes at his beck and call. Hmm. All he has to do to summon his dog is to just... And he comes running right away. And you know what? I'd probably be dead already if it weren't for him. So where were you at around midnight to 3 a.m. last night? I was playing billiards. Where? What street? There's some sort of cafe near the river. It's quite nice, actually. Can anyone confirm that? Yeah, there are tons of people there, and there also were security cameras, so yes, yeah, someone can. So that means I'm free to go now, right? That's correct. Under the condition that you don't leave town. All right, deal? You can go. So what's up, Marina? Hold on. Did something new come up? Give me a second. Marina. I'll be back. Marina. Hold on, sir. I have to ask you something. Oh, look, you can't speak after all. Excuse me. Do you remember the date of when you got wounded by your friend? Yeah, it was on the 5th of August. It was my birthday. All right, then would you mind if I show you this photograph? Do you recognize him? There. That one on the right. That's him, the gray doctor. Are you sure it's not the one on this left? <laughs> of course. Now leave me and my friends alone. Marina. Marina. Here, Marina. Why don't you have some tea first? Tell me what happened. I don't want any tea. Could you at least tell me that you can get your hands on a warrant so we can go back to Guvarev's place? Tell me what he told you first. The poker play? Yeah. He told me that the Grey Doctor isn't Pavel, but Strelnikov. And do you believe that, Marina? Do you really think he fixed up all those gangsters out of his love for them? The guy told me he was wounded on the 5th of August. And the 5th of August was when Pavel disappeared from the city. Let's just go back to Gubarev's place and check it out again. Just do it for me, alright? Come on, let's get moving. Alright then. Honestly, this trip better be worth it. We didn't conduct a search before, and that's because he was drunk and he fell from the stairs and he died. That's it. We never got the chance to search the second floor. Strelnikov wouldn't work for him without a good reason. He must have something on him. Money. It's not money. He has that already. He's a successful surgeon. That Gubarev definitely has leverage on him. Maybe he had leverage on Andreev too. He came back to get revenge. Enough speculations. Where is it? Here? Right here. All right, let's split up and look. Please make it thorough, all right? All right, then. Over here. Mingo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
please prepare the contrast solution. Pass me the sponge. Mm -hmm. Right. Someone, please go over her vitals. Looks like we're done. Thank you everyone for your assistance. You can close her up. Mikhail, I'm sorry. You were right all along. I'm no. sorry. No, I'm sorry. I should be apologizing to you. Please forgive me. How's your father? She's asleep because of the injection. You know how much we love our daughter. All right. We got a passport and an ID that has bloodstains on it. Mm -hmm. This one belongs to Pavel Andreev. You see it? Right yes, now. it's Pavel's passport. I know, but for now, just Actually, come down. we have a purple-colored wallet with, with some money still inside. Yes. A leather-bound ledger containing personal notes. I'm all right. And several photographs who belong to the homeowner. Yes. Excuse me. Hey, come just on, a buddy. Sec. Let us register. I need to take a look. Three bundles of cash. One with a hundred U.S. dollar banknotes, and the other two are it's the mayor. Russian banknotes. So Very denominations. Look, that Gubarev has a lot and of blackmail material. Flash drive. Yeah. And the recorder, silver in color. Let me see. There's this jerk at work. He's annoying. So get rid of him. How can I help? The only way you can help is to take him to the forest and bury him. You know, I miss the good old days when it was so easy to get rid of someone by just hitting them with a bat on the head. And that said, you're done with him. Just like that, all your problems are solved. Marina, this is good. Stop worrying. We're starting to see the whole picture now, which is good. So we can charge him for his illegal activities. From there, we can take Alexei, another step and... All we have is a voice recording. It's not sufficient proof. Marina, that's his motive. Strelnikov put the head on Andreev. Gubarev did the work to get his leverage. They have a falling out, so Strelnikov kills him for it. Marina, I am sure. We will find Strelnikov's fingerprints all over that house. So what? The only thing that proves is that he visited Gubarev. No evidence, no witnesses, no proof, nothing. I have to talk to him directly and get a confession. I can get a warrant in about 30 minutes. But what's the point? You always end up doing whatever you want anyway. Alexei. This scumbag made me believe that the man I love is guilty. That it was all his fault. That Pavel was the Grey Doctor all this time. When I came in today, I fully believed that he was the one who killed Gubarev. Well, you had every reason to think so. That's not the point. I just ended up believing whatever he told me. How will I ever face Pavel? Then just apologize. Alexei, you're an idiot. Of course I am. Marina, just drop me off there. Now listen, you have half an hour, and I come in with a warrant, and I arrest him. Is that clear? You 
You gonna leave already? Well, yeah. I messed up a lot in there, so I'm going. Don't try to stop me. I gotta go. <laughs> Why do you always have to get in my way? You're an idiot, Sergei. How was it? It went well. That's good. Good job. <clears throat> do you remember the time we got lost in the forest in our third year? Wasn't it your idea to go through that forest? I mean, it was faster. <laughs> our friends came looking for us at the dorm and then they... The girls even sent those, uh, those rescue teams to find us they out did. in the forest. And, and do you remember that girl? Yulia Simakova, was it? Red hair? Yeah. Uh huh. She told me this. You know, Strelnikov? If you were the only one out there, nobody would have bothered to look for you. Everyone was just worried about Andreev. I'm sure she just wanted to piss you off, and I guess... It looks like she did. No, everybody liked you. <laughs> now, after all those years... People still like you. Attention. We kindly ask all of the staff of the hospital to come to the conference hall. <sighs> Listen, I wanted to ask you something. <sighs> Go on. Why did you tell Marina that I was the Grey Doctor? You know, Marina, she was uh, so zealous to find out where you were and... She found out about the operation. It was done on this criminal called Bones, or whatever his name was. Someone mentioned it was you. So when she asked me if it was you, I told her it was. And... And... <laughs> and honestly... I really thought that you were dead. That you weren't coming back. Nobody thought you were still alive. I was scared, Pavel. I... I'm a coward. Listen. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I don't think there's anyone out there who isn't afraid of anything. Come on. They're waiting for us, so let's go. My colleagues. This is not a meeting, or a conference, or a council. We are all gathered here at the humble request of Dr. Mikhail Kazachenko. So, here Thank we you. are. Hey, my colleagues, I can't help but share the good news that I've received. I've just reviewed the latest MRI of my daughter, Nika, after the operation. The result is compelling. There are no complications whatsoever. Yeah, her vitals are holding steady. I'm currently at a loss for words. <laughs> there are so many things that I want to tell you all. But, uh, as you know, we work here every day shoulder to shoulder, dealing with patients daily, such as our commitment to our calling. <clears throat> our patients come to us with their complaints, asking for help, and we help them through. We do so in our best capacity. We do our best. Inevitably, we get used to the pain they carry. I, for one, am used to it. I've grown accustomed to it in time. But when your very own daughter is the patient in question, and, you, and you're incapable of helping her, <laughs> like me, for instance, a doctor, an experienced professional in our field, unable to help my own child. Yeah, I only had one question in my mind. Why her? Why her? Damn it, why her? 
Why did it have to be my daughter when she hasn't even had time to do anything good or bad in her life? Oh, I'm sorry, that's not really what I wanted to say. I, I just wanted to thank everyone here for helping my family. So I'm really grateful to each and every one of you here for helping out my daughter. Thank you for giving her another chance. You not only saved her life, but you also saved my life and the life of my wife as well. Thank you, everyone. The Dr. Semyonov, my dear friend and colleague, thank you. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Sergey! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you if so much! If anyone deserves this applause, then it's Dr. Andreev! Oh, Dr. Andreev! Thank you! Truly! Sergey! What you did in there was nothing short of a miracle. It's I'm going to ask you again. Please, Thank doctor, you. that's Thank more you than you enough. So much. Have you ever heard of a man named Vadim Gubarev? No, no. So modest already, Pavel. This is the man that saved my daughter. <laughs> I know what you did. You used Pavel Words as a scapegoat. You remember how you pretended to be worthy? Do you? you. Thank what are you so trying much. to say? <laughs> You're welcome. It was my pleasure to do it. <laughs> if I were you, I would start confessing about everything I did before a court forces one out of you. If you were me. You will never be like me. Hmm? And you, Dr. Strelnikov! I thank you as well! If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have gone through the operation of my daughter, so thank you! Let's give a round of applause for Dr. Strelnikov for taking part in my daughter's operation! Round of applause, everybody! I thank you from the bottom of my heart! And I'd like to announce uh, a momentous milestone in Dr. Strelnikov's career. He has been offered a job in one of the most prestigious hospitals in Moscow. I've already signed all his transfer papers, so let's congratulate him and wish him the best in his future endeavors. Once again, I thank everyone from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Yeah, I never really liked him. Exactly. That was fantastic work. So get rid of him. How can I help? The only way you can help is to take him to the forest and bury him. Ever since he came back from the U.S.? What is this? He thinks he's this hot shop. Like, what does he want from me? He's like a parasite that's just sucking away at, at, at my life for showing up like the way that he did. I work with him now. Is that you, sir? And now everybody at work loves him because he's such a talented and gifted surgeon. Let's go. And just recently, he's going to do this operation in race by a video conference. It's serious, isn't it? He's a parasite. Please just come with me. He always has been. It's you. Why did you say all those things? I can't take this anymore. Anna. I have to do something about this. Are you coming with me? This problem. Or not? <laughs> you know I miss the good old days when it was so easy to get rid of someone by just hitting them with a bat on the head. And that's it, you're done with them. Just like that, all your problems are solved. Since he's a surgeon, why don't we just break his hand, take a finger? That'll be it for him. See? Right? Like he never existed. That'll be the end. Ooh. Hitting them with a bat on the head. And that's it, you're done with him. Sergey. Just like that, all your problems are solved. Sergey. That's it. Everyone back to work.
Sergey. We need to talk. Just give me a minute. Listen to me. Don't leave. Come on, let's just talk. Come on, just listen to me. Just hear me out. Come on, just listen. Come on! after the tone. Hello, Sergey. It's me. Please just explain to me what happened. I don't understand what's going on. <sighs> Sergey, I'm begging you, please call me back. What was that? What was that? I found that recording at Gubarev's house. Don't you get that it's all Sergei's fault? He was drunk when he said he that. He wanted you he dead, was... don't That's you? That's nonsense, he wouldn't. But he did, Pavel. He was the only one I told about where you were. Can't you see that this is all his fault? I know this is just Pavel. a coincidence. Pavel. I'm telling you, he couldn't do this. Sergei was the great doctor. He was a great doctor all along. Do you get it? I'm sorry, but I had to. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm really sorry I ever doubted what you told me, Pavel, and I... I just wanted to know what happened to you, to finally get the truth. But at some point, I already gave up. I broke. You were always better than me. Stronger. So you... You came here only to completely humiliate Sergei? To catch him, right? No. I did all this for you. The only reason why I came here is to prove to everyone that you are innocent. I didn't think it would escalate to this. I hope you can forgive me. That's enough. I'm sorry. I've had enough. I'm done. I'm sorry. Stop it. We're done here. I said I'm sorry. Strelnikov is gone. You what? I said he's gone. Marine, I told you he'd run. That's fine, don't worry. <laughs> Calm down, we'll handle it from here. I'm the only one to blame. It's all my fault since I believed in what he said. <laughs> Wait, so this is about Andreev? I'm sorry. Marina. I love him so much. I can understand what he's thinking given everything he went through. You have to give him time. <laughs> you know what? My wife bought tea yesterday. Tastes strange, but good. 
We should try it. All right? Come with me. Calm down. Hmm? Come on. Trust me on this. You're gonna be fine. Sergey, did you hear me? Sergey. I. Uh... Please don't leave me. Please just come back to me. And if you really. If you love me, Sergey. And if you really care for our baby. Please don't run away. I will always be by your side. Because I love you. Dr. Semyonov, could you please explain to me what just happened at the hall? I can't make sense of it. <sighs> Something happened. Something happened. I don't want to talk about it. Why don't we talk about something different? I've been wanting to say this for a while now, and I won't forgive myself if I don't say it right now. Mm. Will you chew my ear out again, or God forbid, ask me out on a date? <laughs> <laughs> ask you out, huh? We can skip that stage already. Move in with me. I want us to spend the rest of our time together. That's not very long, as you know very well. How long? How long do you have left? Around three to four months for sure. Hmm. Well... That sounds like forever, doesn't it? I'm bad at cooking, by the way. I don't care. Could you check on Anna for me? I'll get on it right away. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, you poor thing. Are you planning to leave us? I'll finish my cases and hand over my patients. I'll do it after that. Anna, don't shoot from the hip. You shouldn't be mixing your work and private life. <laughs> like that saying goes, let's separate apples from oranges. Did you manage to? Hmm, it looks like I didn't. And neither did I. Goodbye, Dr. Varlamova. Goodbye, Anna.
Come on. Move your ass. Let's go. Yes. I'll be right there. How is he? The first responders did all that they could. But the brain, see for yourself. <sighs> Dr. Semenov, we have just received a request for a heart transplant. Understood. Thank you. I'm sorry. What now, Pavel? Do you know where Anna is? I called her already. She's on her way now. Give this to the transplant surgeon. Of Phone, course. please. Right now? Come on, just go already. Where is he? Follow me. My patient is already prepped for a heart transplant. That's why I need you to sign the certificate of brain death right now so I can proceed. Understood. But we have to wait for her resident, resuscitator. She also has to sign this document and... Oh, Anna, come in. <coughs> we actually need your help. This gentleman over here is our colleague from the transplant center. Hello there. The angiogram scans we have performed indicate a lack of blood flow to his brain. All you have to do is to sign these papers to finalize the decision to switch off life support. With all due respect, I refuse. What makes you think you can decide whether he lives or he dies? All of this happened because of you. Sergei ended up like this because of you. You all turned your back on him so quickly. And now you just want to send him off to his death just like Anna, that? Anna, you of all people know that he's no longer alive. He may not be alive for you, but he's alive as far as I'm concerned. I just visited him in the ward. He's breathing. I just held his hand and it's warm. I don't care what you think. I... Mr. Belkina, believe me when I say I'm sorry for your loss, but my patient needs the operation right now, not tomorrow or next week. In case you weren't listening, my answer is no. I don't have time for this. Every minute is precious. Anna. Anna! <sighs> Dr. Semenov, we, we have to do something. 
She will come around. She's going to sign that document. How will they ever accept the fact that he won't be with me anymore? Tell me, how can I let him go? What you're saying is impossible. Pavel, please forgive him. I beg of you. I've already forgiven him. Thank you. You know, a lot of people recently decided to forgive me. They, um, hated me. Couldn't forgive me, but they finally did. That's why. Please give me five more minutes with him. All right. Did they pull the plug? Yes. for what happened to him? No. Of course not. It was an accident. <laughs> What's going to happen to us? To us? We'll get through this. Especially since I'm sure of who I am. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, didn't you agree to get married to me? Hey, Captain, you're about to lose your ship. I'm sure somebody will find it. Let's go. Are you sure? He spent six months building that. Mom, Dad, it already helped me. And I got to meet Pavel. 
So now, I hope it helps somebody else to make their dreams come true. What about your dream, then? Sailing great ships in the vast oceans with you as the captain, Chonka? I guess I'll choose another path. Maybe I'll become a doctor. And if I can do it, even a neurosurgeon. Really, no. <laughs> Why don't we have our race right now? <laughs> All right, then. I bet you two can catch up with me. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you doing? Doing great. Hello? Hello. You sure? <laughs> hey. Hey. What's up? Why don't we sit? You really have to get rid of that color in your hair. You aren't a student anymore. Did you understand? Okay, I got it. You can take it to finance. All right, thank you. <laughs> He's under anesthesia, and so far he's stable. Good luck. So, uh, you said you wanted to talk to me? Oh, yeah, I... uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Dr. Pryanishikov, could you please sign this? Oh, yeah, of course. I can wait for you. I'm sorry, this won't take more than a second. So, Katya, Oh, and don't I... forget about the second page as well. Right, thanks for reminding me. Please check on the patient in Ward 315 or ask somebody else to do it. Of course. Thank you. Sure. Excuse me. All right. Um, I'm uh, so I... looking for Dr. Pavel Andreev. If I'm not mistaken, he works here. Dr. Andreev? He's the head of the department here. Do you know where I can find him? He just left for an operation. Hmm. Is it fine if I wait for him? The operation is complicated and might take a lot of time. I'd still like to wait for him. All right, have a seat over there. Thank Take you. Take care. So you were saying... Right, uh... Dr. Zabalkina, please proceed to the operating room. How are you feeling, Dr. Semyonov? I felt better. All right, then. Best of luck, Pavel. No, good luck to us and to our patients. Today and forever. Let's get started. Dr. Semyonov, let's start counting to ten. 